Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Do I, do I have my uh, hammer? <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You see, my, my uh, gavel is, is gone. And uh, I'll yeah, remain on the other side of the room. So uh, warmly welcome to the uh, MAG, MAG meeting, uh, first in the series of preparation uh, for the uh, uh, Brazil, uh, Brazil IGF. Uh, since uh, we uh, have new MAG members, I think it would be very appropriate to start the meeting with a, a brief uh, tour de table or tour along the lines of the table uh, and asking uh, every MAG member uh, briefly introduce uh, him or herself uh, that uh, uh, we know uh, each other better. So wh why don't we start, which we, so let, let me start from, from this side. I think, Ginger, you, you start as your MAG member. Uh, good morning. My name is Virginia Pak. Most people call me Ginger. I am new on the MAG this year. Uh, I come from Venezuela for the last 40 years, although I'm currently based in the U.S. for medical reasons, for family reasons. Um, I have high hopes for my work on the MAG, particularly many of you know me already for remote, remote or online participation, as we'll be calling it, and of course the IGF to, IDF is a showcase for that, and with Brazil now, we expect to set an example for the world. So I look forward to working with everyone on that. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Flavio Wagner. I am a member of the board of the Brazil Internet Steering Committee. And it, this is my first year as a MAG member. I am looking forward to work with you and help you as uh, we can in Brazil to make a very successful uh, IGF. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Aysel Kandemir. I am from the host country of uh, 19 IGF. I work for Regulatory Authority of Turkey as an ICT chief expert. Thank you. So thank you. Maybe go, uh, before going to the sec second row, we would, uh, I would like to also ask uh, other uh, representatives of Brazilian delegation to introduce themselves. Good morning to you all. My name is Jandir Santos. I'm the head of the Information Society Division and the Minister of External Relations of Brazil. I also attend the ICANN meetings, and I'm also a member of this IANA transition group in, the, in ICANN. Thank you. My name is Hartmut Glazer. I am the Executive Secretary of the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, and I am watching to see the decisions that you are taking because I need to put everything in place. Thank you. So, Hatmut, thank you. Uh, you omitted to say that uh, I asked you last year to uh, help me out and, and, and be, my, be my advisor. Okay, it's a pleasure. Uh, Carlos Afonso, I am also a member of the uh, int uh, Brazilian Inter Internet Steering Committee and a part of a Brazilian delegation. Hello, uh, this is Ihsan Durdu. I am uh, uh, I'm representing uh, Turkish government, and uh, I'm also member uh, at ICANN GAC Governmental Advisory Committee. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Meral Öztarhan. Uh, I am from Government uh, Regulatory Authority of Turkey. Uh, also, we are uh, old host of IGF. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is La Kaspar. 
I am uh, an incoming, new, incoming MAG member from Croatia um, as part of the civil society community. I currently work for a UK-based internet policy organization called Global Partners Digital, and the bulk of my work for the last two years has been facilitating civil society engagement in internet governance debates. I'm looking forward to working with you all. Thank you. So good morning, everybody. My name is Amelia Andersdotter. I've been a member of the European Parliament, and um, so in that capacity, I've been considering a lot about the regulatory implications um, for the internet and also internet governance. Good morning. I'm Anna Neff from Portugal. Um, I'm the director of the Department for Information Society at, at the Ministry. So I'm uh, from the governmental part, and I'm uh, in the MAG for two years. Good morning, I'm Virat Bhatia. I work for AT&T in South Asia, uh, and I've been MAG member for a second year. Good morning, everybody. My name is Desiree Zachariah. I'm from Antigua and Barbuda. I represent the OECS, that's the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, and I've been a MAG member for two years. No hay traducción de español hoy. Why is that? Okay. Well, my name is Juan Fernandez. I am a senior advisor at the Ministry of Communications of Cuba and an assistant professor in the University of Informatics Science. I participated in the negotiation process of the outcome documents of both phases of WISIS and also was a member of the working group in Internet governance. I'm looking forward to, well, I'm first time in MAG, and I'm looking forward to collaborate with everybody, all the members of the MAG, without exception, in order to carry out our mandate to have a good organization of the next IGF in Brazil. Thank you. Bonjour, Président. Je suppose qu'il y a une traduction en français. Moi, je me nomme Kossia Messimo. Je suis responsable informatique au ministère en charge du développement au Bénin. Je suis membre du Forum national sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. Je suis membre du MAG depuis 2013. I'm Lynn Sainamore, President and CEO of Internet Matters, although previously I was President and CEO of the Internet Society for about 13 years. I participated in all the WISIS 1 and 2 and all the associated PrepComs. I'm an incoming MAG member, and along with Jan Dose, Hartmut, and probably one or two others, I'm also on the IANA Transition Steering Committee. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. My name is Victoria Romero. I'm uh, the Mexican mission here in Geneva. Uh, I'm second time MAC member, and uh, as you know, Mexico is extremely committed uh, to the process of IGF and having also offered the, to host the uh, session in 2016. And uh, although I'm here in a personal capacity, uh, many of the of the priorities of uh, of Mexico are uh, I, I will be uh, retaking and bringing bringing them to the to the MAC. Thank you very much, Chair. Good morning. My name is Peter Dengate Thrush. I'm from New Zealand. I'm a first time MAG member appointed by the technical community. I've been involved in internet governance since about 1995. I'm the former chair of Internet New Zealand and the Asia-Pacific Top-Level Domain Association, and most recently in the immediate past chair of ICANN. I've been involved in ICANN since before it existed, and as a result of a long commitment to the multi-stakeholder model, transparency, accountability, and good governance. And I'm also a long-time supporter of the IGF. I attended uh, the first IGF meeting and, and the most recent. I think I've been to six of the nine. Uh, I've also attended quite a lot of the regional IGFs, including from memory those in Russia, New Caledonia, and Hong Kong. 
So I look forward to assisting the IGF in what should be a very crucial year for internet governance. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dominique Lazansky. I'm a new MAG member, so an incoming MAG member. I work for the GSMA, which is the Mobile Phone Trade Association, and we're based in London, and I'm based in London as well. Um, I uh, have been attending the IGF for four years, but I first attended as a different stakeholder under civil society. So I look forward to uh, working with everybody and um, with my background in, uh, in internet governance. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Christina Arida. I uh, represent the government of Egypt as a former IGF host country, and I work for the National Telecom Regulatory Authority. I'm also representing the Secretariat of the Arab IGF. Good morning. My name is Marilyn Cade. I am a second time MAG member. I have uh, been involved, I was uh, fortunate to attend both phases of uh, the WISIS to the extent that business was able to participate in the first phase, but also very uh, heavily in the second phase. I work across most of the uh, Internet governance ecosystem uh, activities and organizations. I was recently at the ITU Plenipod as a um, uh, member of a country delegation. I am also a member of the CSTD Working Group uh, on Enhanced Cooperation but previously a member of the CSTD Working Group on Improvements to the IGF. I spend a good deal of my time following the activities of the national and regional IGFs and uh, focusing on trying to encourage additional, uh, particularly businesses from the developing countries and associations from the developing countries to become engaged in Internet governance. And I'm particularly interested in how we're going to be able to broaden and deepen the participation of all stakeholders in the upcoming um, IGF. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Hussam El Gamal. I represent the business uh, group, and um, this is my second uh, MAG uh, membership. Uh, I represent uh, Africa ICT Alliance and also uh, ICC base. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Bahar Asmat. I uh, come from Egypt and I work with ICANN and I've been on uh, the IGF MAC for uh, three years. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Bianca and I'm from um, a Namishan ambassador, an incoming uh, new MAC member. So I'm very honored to be selected as one of the younger MAG members, and I've been involved in internet governance since um, Egypt in 2009 and helped as the secretariat for the first Asia-Pacific regional IGF. So I'm really looking forward to making IGF a more youth-friendly place. Good morning. My name is Cheryl Miller, and I am currently with Verizon Communications. I also am a member of the business stakeholder community. This is my, this will be my third IGF, and um, I have previously also hold, held, excuse me, um, positions with the United States government in the administration and uh, uh, the U.S. Congress. And I'm very, very, very honored to be here. So thank you all very much. Good morning. I'm Angelique Ali Hussain Del Castillo. I'm from Suriname. Um, I am a senior policy advisor and diplomat at our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and I've been part of the MEC for two years now. Should uh, Article in MEC member introduce ourselves? Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Guo Liang. I'm working for Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. I'm uh, one of the first generation internet users in China, and uh, I used to do research on internet use and impact in China. So uh, before I uh, became uh, a MAC member, I, I know nothing about IG. So using a Chinese metaphor, I jumped in the water, uh, water before I know it's so deep. <laughs> anyway, I learned a lot. Uh, I will continue to uh, support uh, IGF like this. Uh, and uh, uh, OK, uh, thank you. 
Hello, my name is Izumiya. Unlike my Chinese friend, I, I'm one of the usual suspects <laughs> from Asian civil society and involved with the, like Peter, the formation process of ICANN uh, back in 1978 and also worked at, at large at ICANN and attended almost all the ICANN meetings and since 1999 to 2010 and it stopped. And then I got involved with the WISIS, IGF, including AP Regional IGF. And I don't know how long I would continue, but this is my outgoing opportunity from the MAG. But I will stay, stay perhaps chasing you guys. Thank you. Good morning, dear colleagues. I'm very happy today, this morning, that uh, I could sit uh, next to Mr. Izumi, Professor Izumi, and Mr. Guo, so we can form in a block of East Asia. <laughs> uh, my name is Chen Hongbing. You can call me Chen uh, because it's uh, very easy to remember. Uh, I'm a counselor from Chinese permanent, uh, permanent Mission of China in Geneva. It's my second year of uh, to be the uh, MAC member. I know that uh, when you say, when sometimes you claim, your, claim you are a representative of the government, uh, you will face some difficulties, or maybe suspicion, or prejudice, or even hostility. I know, indeed, sometimes government representatives uh, deliver some mes disturbing messages, but we are sincere to be part of the process. We are sincere to contribute. More than that, China now has the biggest population of internet user. So for me, as a representative of Chinese government, I would like to assure all of you that we, I, or can contribute much more to the work of the MAG. I'm committed and dedicated to helping, uh, working together with other colleagues to uh, uh, better, to achieve a better delivery of the mandate of IGF as well as MAG. Thank you all. I think Constance. Good morning, everyone. I'm Constance Baumler, Senior Director, Global Policy Partnerships at the Internet Society, uh, and I've been on the MAG for three years. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Sun Jung Byun from Korea, and I work for Korea Internet and Security Agency. This, uh, this year has been my first year as a MAC member, and I'm really looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is Yuli Ilanska, and I represent Russian Federation and in particular Ministry of Telecom and Mass Communication. And I'm first uh, time in MAC as a member. And uh, actually, I recently joined uh, Internet Governance and also I joined GAC this year. And uh, before, I had the uh, quite a deep background in mobile communication. So I have the possibility to compare these two uh, telecom um, areas and uh, actually, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, it's uh, quite symbolic for me to be here in ITU building, and in particular in Popov room. So I'm be happy he to be here. Thank you. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Robert Schlegel. I'm a member of Russian parliament. I'm a journalist by uh, training. Also, I'm a member of the uh, Parliament Assembly of Council of Europe. I'm a uh, reporter about uh, internet uh, governance uh, team. Uh, and I'm a user with uh, uh, 15 years uh, experience. And uh, uh, I'm very happy to be uh, here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Murad Bukadum. I'm from Algeria. I, uh, I was based here uh, as a diplomat in the permanent mission for uh, five years. Currently, I am a deputy director in the Foreign Affairs uh, Ministry in uh, Algiers. 
and I am a MAG member in my second term. Thank you. Good morning, colleagues. My name is Mark Carvel. I'm a senior policy advisor on internet governance policy in the UK government's Department for Culture, Media and Sport. I've been a MAG member for two years. I'm also the UK representative on ICANN's Governmental Advisory Committee and also UK representative on the Council of Europe's Steering Committee on Media and Information Society. Thank you. Tawella, please. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Toela Nyiranda Jere. I work with the NEPAD Planning and Coordinating Agency as a Programs Manager, and this will be my second term as a MAG member. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Hi, my name is Sita Laksmi. You can call me Sita. I'm working at HIFOS um, in the Technology and Transparency and Accountability Initiative in Southeast Asia. Uh, I'm representing civil society um, and active in the national IGF in Indonesia, and also Indonesia, uh, I'm representing Indonesia in general. I'm a new NEC member, and it's an honor to be part of this group and looking forward to bring more developing countries' voices. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Peter Major. I'm an advisor to the Permanent Mission of Hungary here in Geneva. Uh, I'm I have been on the MAG for three years. I'm an outgoing MAG member. I hope to be able to continue to give you some support. Uh, in addition to that, I've been chair. I have been the chairman of the uh, CSTD working group on the improvements to the IGF, and I have been chairing the other group on enhanced cooperation. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Evi Nakiu, and I come from the permanent mission of Greece here in Geneva. This is uh, the first time that um, I attend uh, such a meeting. Um, I don't know if this makes me an observer. For sure, I'm not a member of uh, MAG. Uh, but I'm here because we uh, received um, uh, a letter in um, the context of the European um, uh, presidency uh, and as we understand, is to enhance the presence of uh, EU member states within this uh, procedure. Thank you. No, actually, Greece was the host of the first uh, IGF meeting in 2006. So that's, that's why you're here. So, yes, but this makes us member? Yeah, that, 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 that ensures the, your presence here, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Fiona, please. Hi, I'm Fiona Alexander. I work at um, NTIA, which is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, and I've been there for just over 14 years and been involved in a variety of Internet governance discussions at um, both phases of WSIS, ITU, obviously, and ICANN, and a variety of other things. So who is next there? I, I, don't, see, I don't see it that far. Good morning, everyone. My name is Olga Cavalli. I am a senior advisor of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Argentina. I am a departing MAG member after several years. I've been honored to be part of this group. I've learned a lot, and I hope to contribute from outside the MAG now. I am also involved in ICANN activities. I am the Argentina representative in the GAG, where I'm also the vice chair. Uh, my university teacher in Universidad de Buenos Aires. I am the academic director of the South School of Internet Governance since 2008 and a member of the Regional Internet Governance Committee. And all the best to the new MAG, and I hope that I can contribute from the community. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Silvia Monson Bebidart. I'm a vice president of WITSA, which is the World Information Technology and Services Alliance that gathers 80 countries of the IT industry around the world, and also general director of ALETI, which is the ICT Ibero-Latin American Industry Federation, 
I'm also Vice President of the IT Industry Tax Force of the WISIS process in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, which is ELAC from ECLAC UN. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you. And I'm a new MAG member. Thank you. Good morning, all colleagues. Uh, my name is Juuso Moisander. I'm a new incoming MAG member, um, but I've been around with Internet Governance for uh, about six years. I represent the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Finland, um, and my, I'm the desk officer for Information Society and ICT Questions, so I'm responsible for WISIS follow-up. I, uh, I have a background in trade policy and you know, on market access questions with ICT products. Uh, currently, I represent uh, my government in uh, several international organizations. I'm the uh, Finnish rep in the uh, ICANN's uh, Governmental Advisory Committee. I also do CSTD. I was a member of the uh, CSTD Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation and so on. Uh, nationally, we, uh, we have a uh, WISIS follow-up coordination group, and I'm chairing that. And that group also organizes Finland's national IGF, the Finnish Internet Forum. So consequently, I'm also the chair of that. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Cristina Monti from the European Commission. Um, I am an international relations officer, uh, in particular at DigiConnect, which is the Director General for um, Communication Networks, Content and Technology. <clears throat> As uh, many of you know, the European Commission has been a committed supporter um, of the IGF since uh, um, its beginning, as well as a stable uh, financial contributor. And we look forward to its further strengthening and evolution, as it is now clear that it has become a fundamental player in the Internet governance ecosystem. Thank you. So on the last, on the last row. Okay. I th thank you. Uh, I'm Avri Doria. I'm new to the MAG, but I've been involved with the IGF since it was just a concept. I'm an, uh, I'm an independent researcher and educator involved both in Internet technology and the IETF and policy as a civil society person in the ICANN generic name supporting organization and in the working group on enhanced cooperation. I was nominated for the MAG by the civil society coordination group and I live in Providence in the U.S. Hello, everybody. My name is Lee Hibbard. I'm Internet Policy Coordinator on Human Rights, Rule of Law and Democracy at the Council of Europe, which is an intergovernmental organization of 47 countries based in Strasbourg. Um, the Council of Europe has been observer to, to the MAG um, uh, since the inception in 2006 of the IGF. I was involved in the WISIS phase, uh, Tunis phase also. Um, and I'm also uh, participating in other fora, including ICANN and uh, the EURIDIC, the European Dialogue on Internet Governance. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Sandra Hoferichter. I'm the Managing Director of the EURIDIC, the, Euro the, the European Dialogue on Internet Governance. And I'm involved there since its beginning in 2008. And furthermore, I'm also a rep European representative to the ALAC, uh, to ICANN's ALAC. Thank you. So if no MAG members on the last row anymore, then maybe we could, we could get on that, that side. Jivan. Good morning to all. Uh, my name is Ljubčor Jivan Georginski. I am Deputy Chief of Cabinet of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Macedonia and also Head of the Department for Public Relations and Public Diplomacy. Uh, I've been involved in the uh, IG story since I was a, an advisor to the President uh, during the WISIS process in Geneva and in Tunisia. And after that, I've done a few other things in between. Uh, pleasure to be here and an honor, honor as well. And uh, this is my second year starting right now on uh, MAG. I'm, I'm Michael Nelson. It's my second year on the MAG. Um, I've worn many different stakeholder hats, usually at once. 
Um, I've been doing Internet governance since before we had the term, and I've worked at the White House, IBM, Microsoft, uh, currently teaching Internet studies at Georgetown, and in a couple of weeks I'll announce my next job. I'm very glad to be here again. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Slobodan Markovic, and uh, I'm a new MAG member. Uh, I work at the Serbian Registry of Internet Domain Names as uh, advisor for ICT policy and Internet community relations. Uh, before that, I worked uh, uh, as advisor to Serbian Minister for uh, Information Society and Telecommunications. And even before that, I, uh, I was a member of uh, uh, civil society, and I founded uh, the first Serbian uh, NGO uh, active in the area of ICT policy. So uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, all in one a walking internet policy multi stakeholder, <laughs> and uh, uh, looking uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, working with all of you on improving uh, the the program the format, and as uh, looking back to what Ginger said at the beginning, uh, improving the remote participation and the quality of remote participation in uh, IGF. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Aida Mahmoud. My name is Aida Mahmutovic. I'm from Bosnia and Herzegovina, working for uh, One World Southeast Europe, dealing with uh, human rights and Internet. Uh, Istanbul IGF was my third uh, IGF to attend. Uh, I'm an incoming member to uh, the MAG, and I really look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Fatima Cambronero. I am from Argentina from Cordoba, no Buenos Aires. Uh, I have been MAG member for two years. I am research director of AGEA Densi Argentina, uh, a, a, a small civil society organization. I am uh, also a member of ICANN uh, by uh, Latin American and Caribbean region. I am also a member of the uh, program committee of the LAC IGF, the Latin American and Caribbean ICF, among other volunteer, voluntary activities. Thank you. And welcome the new MAG members. So on the second row, I think Patrick. Hi, my name is Patrick Ryan. I'm a strategy and operations principal at Google. This is my third year as a MAG member. Thank you. So I think in, in uh, in the meantime, there have two MAG members arrived, uh, Giacomo and, and then Jack. Giacomo. Giacomo Mazzone from European Broadcasting Union. Uh, I'm continuing my mandate uh, within the MAG and also I am representing the broadcasting unions within the ICANN GAC. Hi, morning. Um, my name is Jack. I am from the Association for Progressive Communications um, based in Malaysia. Um, we are a civil society organization working on social justice and the internet and internet policy issues. I head the women's rights program. So thank you, and we have two uh, GAC members participating remotely. Sorry, MAG members. <laughs> so that, that is the recurrent, recurrent mistake. When I say, uh, in, in this context, if I say GAC, please uh, read it MAG. <laughs> My apologies. You know, the, the, the old love never rusts, right? This is a proverb. So we have two, two uh, MAG members uh, participating remotely online. Uh, Subi. Thank you, Yanis. I uh, reaffirm that I am a MAG member. Um, so this is Subi Chaturvedi, and good morning, everyone. I come from India, and I'm currently with the Triple IIT Delhi, which is a state university focusing on information technology. I've been a proud MAG member now for two years. 
this being my third term. 2012 was my first IGF, and this goes on to reaffirm my belief that IGF is bottoms up, transparent and inclusive. And if you'd like to, you can not just participate, but also decide and enrich and enhance the program. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome all the new MAG members and invite them to own this and enrich this space with the energy that is uniquely their own and inform the discussion with their insights. As a developing country and emerging economy MAG member, access, gender, ICT, multilingualism, and enhancing multi-stakeholder participation, especially from underrepresented stakeholder groups like women and youth is a priority. I run a collective called Media for Change and disseminating discussions at the IGF um, best practice, good practices, and what we do here is a priority. I do that by writing articles and participating in panels on national media. Um, and just to end, I'm also part of the India IGF MAG and serve as the convener of its working group, working towards the first ever India IGF. I'm looking forward to working with all of you people, and it's a fantastic new team. Um, Yanis, thank you for your leadership, and Chengatai, thank you for doing what you do each year. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping for the best ever IGF uh, 2015. Thank you, Brazil, for having us. Thank you. And then Ephraim? Ephraim, are you with us? Ephraim is on mobile, and so I will introduce him here. Um, Ephraim Percy, Percy from Kenya is a policy fellow at Access Now, working on the connection between internet policy and human rights, and is also an affiliate in the Internet Policy Observatory created by the Center for Global Communication Studies at the Annenberg School for Communication at the University of Pennsylvania. He has a passion for democratic governance, youth work, human rights, transparency, and international development with a background of engaging with a diverse range of research and social development organizations such as Transparency International, Mercy Corps, Mercy Corps International, and the Center for Law and Research International, among others. Citizen media, journalism, and foreign policy regional integration, integration institutions. He is scheduled to graduate from law school in 2015 and also has training in internet policy and media law from the University of Oxford and the University of Pennsylvania. In addition, he is an ICANN fellow from in Singapore and the USA, and uh, more is available online. So uh, we did want to welcome Ephraim is with us, but on mobile. Yes, thank, thank you. Uh, and Ephraim contributed yesterday to our discussions. Uh, during the open consultation. So thank you very much. And uh, all these presentations are very reassuring because we see the wealth of uh, knowledge and expertise in this room, and uh, certainly that will be very helpful for us to uh, in preparing the uh, Brazil meeting. So let me uh, go now uh, to the formal part and uh, uh, to seek your approval uh, for the agenda of, uh, of the MAG meeting. So uh, agenda is, has been sent out and is uh, available online on the IGF website. And the question is, can we uh, follow suggested agenda uh, during today and tomorrow? Of course, uh, the timing may uh, differ slightly depending on our um, uh, speed of our uh, uh, decision-making process. Uh, but um, in principle, we should uh, follow that order if you do not object. Uh, Marilyn, please. Thank you, Chair. My name is Marilyn Cade. I'm not raising an objection, but a question. I note that um, it is proposed that we talk about intercessional activities um, as item four. Uh, I would just say for myself, I'm struggling to know what intercessional activities would be the most appropriate until after we engage in the discussion on shaping the program and shaping the structure. To me, intercessional uh, work will augment and enhance and feed into the main program. Um, so I would probably prefer to discuss intercessional activities after we spend time uh, engaging in, um, in discussing the overall program um, in a, at least a little bit of detail. Thank you. 
So thank you. Uh, I think we, we could e easily take uh, uh, what is currently point number number four as uh, uh, point new point five and, and swap uh, four and five um, uh, uh, in that order. Uh, Avri, please. Thank you. I actually beg to differ. Um, I think that the intercessional work is important in itself and needs to be discussed as a primary feeder into discussing what will be in the, the, the next meeting. We certainly have ongoing work that, that needs to be understood in, in the best practice forums and, and how to schedule that and how to make sure that work continues. And I believe that we need to start looking at the IGF meeting, not as something that blossoms from the brains of the MAG, but as something that basically derives from the contributions and the work done intercessionally. So I think that starting to talk about what we will have in terms of meetings, in terms of content at the meeting is putting a cart before the horse and would really prefer that we stick to the agenda as was agreed at the beginning in terms of understanding how to do work between the yearly meetings so we're not just a yearly meeting programming committee. Thank you. So thank you. Actually, nothing has been agreed uh, from the beginning. What we, what we are now talking is the proposal of secretariat and hopefully we will agree on, on, on the agenda. And um, so we will, we will follow. What, you see, what, what I would like to suggest, not to lose more time, I, I promise you that all questions will be examined. And let, let us uh, uh, see uh, after discussion uh, of point, uh, uh, suggested point number three of agenda, uh, whether, uh, whether we go uh, to discuss intercessional or we go to discuss uh, IGF meeting. So th th I think we will have more information uh, because I, I, uh, uh, I have some uh, preview what, uh, uh, what information will be uh, shared uh, on, on the uh, agenda item one and two, uh, and then, then uh, that may logically lead us uh, to further conversations. So uh, I did not hear objections on the substance of proposed agenda. We will follow that, and, and the order we will uh, see as, as it goes. So thank you. Now I would like uh, to uh, invite the uh, 2014 uh, host, co host country uh, to uh, make uh, uh, remarks uh, to give us blessing. Uh, and. Um, uh, I uh, call on Ms. Uh, Aysel Kandemir for doing that. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for us to be here in MAG meeting on the way towards the next IGF. In the yesterday meeting for open consultations as host country of past IGF, we are very really delighted to hear many words of gratitude and appreciation. We thank you all for your comments and all constructive criticism made in some of the issues. We think that they will be carefully considered for all of us for the preparation of next IGF. As noted in yesterday's meeting, record high participation in this year's event showed the interest and eagerness of people for discussing the internet issues in an open and interactive manner. Increasingly by the years, through the meetings in different formats, IGF addresses many challenging issues. As it has been stated, IGF provides an enabling platform for international dialogue on internet issues which lead to informed decisions. We all recognize that MAG play a very important role in accommodating these needs with the efforts of, in the preparation of IGFs. Being the kitchen of IGF, MAG brings prominent expertise and knowledge together in shaping the annual forum. We are confident that, again in this meeting, fruitful results will be achieved and more advanced for next year. Having this chance, we congratulate new members of the MAG and thank the previous ones as they did a great job for the IGF in Istanbul. In Istanbul, connectivity, network neutrality, digital trust, human rights issues, IANA transition, and youth involvement 
are just some of the important topics which drew close interest and attention of participants. We think that they will continue to be the important topic at stake for the next year's IGFs. For more inclusive discussion and results, inputs from national and regional IGFs need to be fed the annual Internet Governance Forum. For better outreach, clear guidelines, transparency and publicity of all process on the preparation of IGFs are crucial for the success and inclusion. We think that in the first MAG meeting at each year cycle, it would be good to have informative session, informative session or documents which explain basic instrument of IGFs, its mandates, roles and responsibilities of respective parties, namely MAG, host country and IGF secretariat and the relations between them. Also, it would be a good to chance to, for host country to hear and learn expectations from parties and incorporate them accordingly on the preparation of annual meeting. We believe that considering the accomplishment and challenges noted in the, and experience gained in Istanbul, upcoming IGF will go one step further in achieving more tangible outcomes. We think that recommendations and next steps formulated this year forum will provide guidance and valuable input in designing the program for next year's forum. And now we have a very ambitious agenda in our front. I don't want to continue too much. I'm sure that this meeting will be a very fruitful one in achieving planned purposes. As a final remark, wishing Brazil administration great success for the next year, we would like to reiterate our strong willingness to support them in their journey to attend IGF. I thank you very much for your kind attention. So thank you, Esa, for, for these uh, remarks and, and uh, wishes of best luck <laughs> for all of us. So now I am uh, turning microphone to our host, uh, the uh, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian host, and uh, invite Ambassador Benedicto Fonseca to uh, take the floor uh, for remarks. Thank you, Yanis, and good morning to everyone. Well, I, I want to be very brief because I have already uh, spoken yesterday. I do not want to repeat uh, most of the things I've said, and also because uh, we look forward to the discussions that will follow. Uh, I think this is indeed the most important part and what has brought us here. Uh, however, I'd like to uh, that reaffirm that we are very honored and pleased to host uh, next IGF in Brazil in November. Uh, we look forward to welcome all of you here in the room and also the wider community uh, that is uh, involved in, in those issues that will be dealt with by the meeting. Uh, and just by, <clears throat> I'd like to just to refer briefly to one point I made yesterday, which is that uh, from the Brazilian point of view, and particularly from the point of view of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, we try to ensure we have uh, uh, participation in all internet governance related foreign processes that is consistent with uh, the vision that is conveyed by the Tunis agenda. So by uh, participate in process uh, in ICANN, ITU, United Nations, United Nations General Assembly, UNESCO, and uh, we could go on, the human rights uh, institutions uh, discussing issues regarding to cybercrime. We try to uh, follow the, this notion of the need to ensure a uh, mood stakeholder approach, uh, always uh, respect, while respecting that in some issues uh, decision-making process will be uh, multilateral, but even in those cases should be informed by multi stakeholder uh, discussions. And also we uh, uh, try to, to be as helpful we can in order to try to bring together uh, different perspectives. I think in Brazil we have uh, both the, I think it's a lucky circumstance, but at the same time a challenge because we have so many uh, different uh, aspects, different dimensions in Brazil, different contradictions, and I think it is a synthesis of what takes place uh, in a wider context. So I 
and we are also very happy that we can uh, dialogue and be uh, a bridge to, to, to almost any partner. We do not have any difficulty to, to partner with anyone. Uh, in that overall structure, uh, we value very much the role of IGF. We think IGF plays a unique role, an irreplaceable role in this ecosystem because it provides a place for the true mood stakeholder discussion, interaction. Uh, the role uh, IGF has been playing those uh, last nine years clearly shows that yeah, it is a, a body that should be uh, made permanent, that, that there is a value in having IGF uh, as a meeting place for all those ideas, and which will impart uh, ideas and proposals that will be f fed into other processes as appropriate. So we are committed to strengthen IGF. We are committed to work together with the community to ensure IGF has a stability, uh, from the financial point of view, from human resources, so that it will serve best its purposes. Uh, we look forward to the discussions that will follow that will help us shape IGF, uh, next IGF in Brazil, in a way that will be consistent with uh, this vision, a vision that was condoned by the uh, Net Mundial meeting. We were also very honored and pleased to host earlier in the year that exactly indicates the need to strengthen IGF. Uh, so we are looking forward to, to work in that direction with you. Uh, there is, for us, as a national delegation, as a country, and I think, and again, I'm speaking not only on behalf of the government, but on the Brazilian Steering Committee's behalf, it is both an honor, but also a very big challenge to uh, try to, to build on what we have been doing those last nine years to, build, to follow immediately uh, on the steps of the uh, Istanbul IGF, the IGF in Istanbul, which is widely recognized as a successful meeting, one which brought very useful innovations that helped us move forward and also live up to the challenge of providing a context for this meeting that will be also found as warm and as uh, welcoming as uh, the Turkish uh, government and people provided us in Istanbul. So uh, with those very brief words, just to state again that we will be looking forward to be as helpful as we can, working with you, working with uh, Yanis and you and Desa to ensure we have this successful meeting, one that will fit into those developments that are taking place in so many other places. And it is important that we ensure both that IGF will remain relevant, discuss relevant issues in the most structured way, in the most uh, harmonious way uh, in itself, but also it is very important to think how to communicate uh, what we do in IGF to other processes so that we can have an influence on developments that are taking place uh, elsewhere, particularly in regard to this uh, United Nations uh, General Assembly high-level meeting that will take place in December. So we are looking forward to, to look, to work with you with regard to, all, in all those avenues to make sure we have, the, we can achieve the best decisions uh, we can. So thank you, thank you very much. So thank you. I would like to ask now whether uh, MAG members, do you have any questions at this point in time uh, to the uh, Ambassador Fonseca, to the host country, uh, based on the information uh, or, or outline that uh, uh, Benedicto gave? Yeah, uh, Peter, please. Thank you, Chair. This is Peter Dengate Thrush. I don't have a question for Ambassador Benedicto, but for the previous speaker, if I may, to the previous hosts, and I noted that she said that one of her recommendations was that the MAG should have as its first meeting a set of documents, including those that set out relationships and mandates. Uh, so if this is that first meeting, can those documents be made available, or are we looking at having those made available at, a, at another meeting? But I look forward to receiving those. Thanks. 
so thank you. Um, they are not available now, but uh, we certainly can make them available. Uh, they are available on the website, actually. But we can make a compilation and uh, the, the essential documents uh, we could, we could uh, uh, provide to all MAG members just as a, as a reference uh, information uh, by, by tonight, meaning by, by this afternoon. That's not a big deal to compile them, uh, including also the uh, uh, recommendation of the Working Group on Improvements of IGF, which also is a reference document, as well as actually there was one study that was done by the Working Group uh, of, uh, of the MAG uh, uh, that analyzed the results of implementation of those recommendations in 2013, and I, and I found that that, that was very useful also uh, to see how, uh, how MAG itself sees how far we have gotten in implementing those uh, recommendations. Uh, Mark, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. And just on that point, um, if we could ensure that the uh, analysis of implementation of those recommendations by the, C the CSTD Working Group are really up to date to taking into account the innovations introduced in uh, Istanbul. I think that would be extremely grateful. We ought to communicate that to the wider community, including to the General Assembly in uh, New York. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, it will not be possible because uh, that was a speci specially established working group uh, that uh, looked at uh, improvements and what has been achieved, and that was in 2013. If we want to compile that, that type of documentation or do that type of analysis, we need to establish that working group and ask them, uh, I mean working group from, from MAG members, and ask them to, uh, to do that analysis. What I can tell you to my knowledge, and, and uh, hopefully uh, Elia will confirm that uh, later uh, today, that uh, there uh, was an independent evaluator uh, hired by UNDESA uh, who did the mm, analysis of the IGF, including taking into account the recommendations. I am not very sure where, uh, where the process is in terms of um, uh, report, reporting on, on that analysis, uh, but uh, certainly that might be also a good reference document as soon as it is published um, uh, sort of, uh, from external, external uh, evaluator. Uh, Virat, please. <clears throat> this is a related point, Mr. Chairman. Um, if uh, this is an important area where we need to communicate some of these messages to the UNGA in New York uh, from the point of view of renewal, then it might be worth considering um, setting up a um, working group or a task force within the MAG to try and uh, accumulate uh, innovations and the achievements including the implementation record, and put that into some sort of a communicable di uh, document uh, with an outreach program uh, for the UNGA between now and, and October. So thank you for that suggestion. So that's in our, in our preview, in our hands. We can do that. So I see El Elia is, is um, uh, coming to the podium. She was in the room, in the back of the room. So if you could, if you could Elia, uh, tell us uh, where we are with this evaluation and um, uh, with the, when, when it will be available and if it will be available at all. Good morning. Apologies for being late on the podium, but I was behind participating. Uh, on the question of the project evaluation, you know it was called for in the project document, and I think it was called for to be done after the first mandate, but I think it was not done. So at the moment, we are looking at the entirety of the existence of the IGF uh, project office and the project. Um, the evaluator, it's an independent evaluator, has done his report, and part of that report requires management response. So. We are busy collecting management response so that it can be annexed to the report. 
And then I believe that uh, we had made a commitment to make that report available to MAG. Um, so we hope to get it out shortly, but that's where it's at. Okay, thank you. So we will have a, a view of an independent evaluator uh, at one point, uh, which will also inform our own uh, thinking uh, and analysis uh, where we have gone that far. Uh, Marilyn, please. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Cade. I'm going to follow on to Mark Carvel's comment. Um, thank you, Aliyah, for that update uh, and for the comments that have been so far. But I want to uh, go back to um, what I understood Mark Carvel to be proposing and to um, enhance perhaps that recommendation. I do think it would be good to um, continue to have a, a MAG um, uh, working group that is looking at documenting the improvements and enhancements. That is a kind of a self-governance, um, self-assessment contribution that I think we will want to make. And for the longer term, to uh, respond to uh, Mr. Uh, to Virat's comment, for the longer term, looking into next year, that would be perhaps a periodic reporting even that we could make. But for now, I would suggest that it would be important to capture in a um, letter perhaps with a attachment some of the enhancements and changes that have already happened in the um, in the IGF that could we could use we could we could send it um, widely to other uh, organizations we could uh, also post it on our uh, mag public website which is not necessarily the best way to distribute information but we could also uh, use it as a sort of a formal communication and agree to it uh, within the MAG as we did to last year's communication um, chair when we asked the MAG ask you to communicate on our behalf uh, our call for a renewal. But this letter would be sort of uh, documenting some of the changes that have already happened, in particular delivered um, by the time of the Istanbul hosted, the Turkey hosted IGF. Thank you. I would be happy to um, collaborate with others on beginning to prepare that attachment and also as a former member of the CSTD working group on improvements would be interested if we do set up a small working group for ongoing self-assessment. So actually this was, this was the, the last what you said was uh, what I was waiting for all the time. So the, the volunteer, volunteering to do the job. So this is how we, how we work in, in the, in the uh, MAG. Uh, on a voluntary basis, and I note that uh, Marilyn is volunteering to uh, to do the uh, self-assessment or, or assessment of the work of the uh, MAG in implementing the uh, IGF uh, uh, working group recommendations, and um, based, of course, on on the uh, on the work which was done in 2013. Uh, adding elements uh, of improvement that we introduced in preparation for the IGF meeting. Uh, I see there uh, a request for the floor from Leah. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'd like to express my support for this proposal and uh, I'd like to volunteer as well to, uh, uh, to participate in any way possible and support that work. I think it's an excellent idea and that it could also help us streamline efforts in communicating um, our messages uh, more broadly for each individual MAG member in different fora as well as, well as to, the, um, to feed into the UN processes. Thank you. So thank you. Um, thank you for volunteering uh, for, for, for MAG members who may not know or may not have experience. I would like to uh, tell that there will be a number of working groups. Uh, it is uh, very good that you're uh, helping us and volunteering to work of them. But you need to know that this is not the only opportunity that you can volunteer. There will be many more. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two, I would like to see that every working group that we um, uh, establish would have a, a clearly defined uh, coordinator and others would help, and we would know uh, who would be the, ma the key coordinator of that uh, particular working group. And uh, that 
uh, coordinator would uh, provide updates on activities and, and, and progress. So in, in, in this respect, um, I will take now uh, Virat's comments and uh, we'll move on on the, our agenda. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to clarify that the idea of the working group that I um, floated, uh, which Madeline sort of has expanded upon, is both assessment and outreach, especially given this year. So we should sort of, when we are defining that mandate, we should be clear that we have a specific purpose for this year, and in, in the following years, it could do uh, assessment work alone, but this year we would have to do both and are uh, targeted to provide something towards the end of uh, September or October. Yes, your understanding is correct. That would be assessment for the outreach. Uh, Avri and then Fiona and then uh, Subi remotely. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to confirm that any letter that's written does indeed come back to, to the MAG before it gets sent on. You didn't mention that in your discussion of the process, so I just wanted to ascertain whether that was the case. That is always by, by default. Uh, Fiona, please. Yes, thank you, Yanis. I think similar to the concern that Avi raised, there are a fair number of new MAG members um, this go around. I think the largest rotation we've ever seen. So I think clarity is important. And as you establish these working groups, I think we should be clear to establish terms of reference for the groups so that there's a shared expectation as to what people are doing and how the process works going forward. Uh, thank you. I think that's, that's a fair proposal, and uh, I, I uh, certainly uh, ask uh, Chengetai to write down, but in essence, the terms of reference is based on the report which was uh, done by the working group, MAG working group in 2013 in evaluating the uh, progress in implementing the um, uh, CSTD working group on IGF improvement recommendations. Uh, to, uh, con I mean, to uh, add elements of uh, improvements we introduced in uh, in the run up to the uh, Istanbul meeting, and uh, using that information in drafting uh, uh, communication, which would explain how Mag uh, is uh, implementing this working group uh, recommendations, and then we need to see whom we will be sending this information most probably to uh, member states, delegations who will be working on uh, WSIS plus 10 uh, review, uh, that they have uh, information what is happening and, and um, uh, they can factor that in in their discussions. Uh, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I was going to say I think much the same thing that um, uh, Fiona has said, that really the first I'm not sure whether this is a practice in the MAG, but the very first chore of any working group ought to be to get agreement on its charter and report that back. Yeah. Uh, and that might be a good time to call for volunteers once people understand what the actual work of the group is. But I, I, I see where you're coming from, the difference between ICANN, where you could always ask for the charter and you had the 200 staff members working, so we do not have that luxury. No, no, we, we, we do things a little bit more um, uh, informal way, but uh, understanding should be should be present. That's for sure, and uh, a write-up will be done, and everybody will be able to contribute. But in essence, uh, the idea is to um, sort of uh, put on paper what improvements we have introduced, uh, as requested by the recommendations of IGF uh, uh, working group on IGF improvement. Uh, Subi, please. But very quickly, I would like to move on to the next item. Thank you, Yanis. This is my first MAG meeting uh, through remote participation, and I'm learning and discovering. Um, I support the creation of the working group, and I'd like to volunteer. Um, I had a question, though. When we're discussing the working group, um, are these working groups, and I'm, um, I understand that there'll be several more that will come through organically. There are also the best practice for us that exist already. Will they be the ones feeding into intersessional work? Uh, there was some conversation about setting up uh, frameworks, so some clarity on that account would be helpful. Also, those of us who are not in the room and are participating online, um, if we could, before we come to any concrete discussions on the formulation of the working group or who can volunteer, if we could take this um, online as well and open it up for um, us uh, on the mailing list, that would be something that I'd appreciate greatly. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, no, certainly every, everything will be on the mailing list. This is the way how we, how we function. And um, uh, again, I think that, that we're talk, talking about the same thing in, from different aspects. Working group will be created. We have a, we'll put, put the, 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 the um, tasks ahead of working group and we would expect that uh, working group would uh, produce the uh, document or information uh, to be peer-reviewed by, by all MAG members uh, maybe in a couple of months from now. Uh, Ms. Chen. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, since this year we uh, have uh, the biggest reshuffle of the MAG members, so I suggest uh, uh, that uh, when we have our discussion, we'd better give all the audience or the members a bigger picture or whole picture uh, to facilitate them to better understand the situation. I th think now what we are talking about is a working group about the governance issue of MAG. But there are also other working groups about the substan uh, on, uh, who, who will be responsible for sub substantive works. So it's better, I, I suggest it's better for, for Changatai to give us some briefing about how many working groups we have, which are responsible for what. And then so just to give the new member, especially for the new members, to get a better picture. Thank you. No, thank you. That is, that is uh, very important. And um, we had the, um, the orientation uh, call for new MAG members uh, a, a week ago or 10 days ago where we try to explain uh, how MAG functions and, and what, what MAG does and what MAG does not, actually. That was, that was uh, also part, part of the, the discussions. Um, uh, the terms of reference of the MAG uh, can be found uh, on the website, and uh, we would follow uh, those, I mean, MAG should follow those terms of reference because they have been established uh, based on uh, the decisions uh, of the uh, Tunis phase. Uh, so the question how many working groups uh, we will establish, that is up to us to decide how many we feel need to be established. And uh, there was a feeling that um, we need to uh, look at improvements uh, that have been introduced and uh, how we implement the recommendations of CSTD working group. Uh, this is important because if or when uh, IGF will be evaluated by the member states of United Nations uh, in, in uh, their analysis whether or decision making whether a mandate should be renewed or not. I think that the uh, question of uh, implementation of recommendations of CSTD working group will be uh, scrutinized very closely. So as a result, uh, this, this is the only reference document that we have apart from uh, charter itself, in terms of reference of the MAG and in terms of reference of IGF, which are spelled out in Tunis uh, agenda. Uh, those are the, the documents uh, we will be evaluated against. And uh, we always need to keep that in mind. That, that is our uh, sort of uh, uh, holy uh, document that we need to uh, keep in mind all the time. So I, uh, I would like to move, move uh, further because we're already uh, discussing uh, some substantive things, but we need still to uh, hear presentation from the host country about logistics uh, and uh, uh, then move in the substantive discussion. Um, but I see Fiona and then Peter. Fiona, please. Yes, thank you, Yanis, and not to um, drag this on too much longer, but just for clarity and expectation, um, normally the, these working groups, when we curate them, there's a mailing list, and the mailing list is open just to sort of conform with the ideas of transparency, and I would expect we'll be doing the same thing here, and is the idea that the working group would be MAG members but open to other interested parties as well, because we've operated that way in the past, so I would hope that's what we were doing, but just wanted to confirm that um, in terms of a process point. Yes, I confirm that. Peter? Uh, thank you, Yanis. Uh, uh, it seems to me that I have been chairing this working group on the evaluation and the results were taken up by the Secretariat. Uh, uh, there was a report from the Secretariat which was sent to the CSCD and the CSCD uh, uh, during its meeting uh, endorsed the 
uh, report itself. Uh, however, it was before Istanbul, and I think it's very useful to carry on this work. Uh, personally, if I may, I would volunteer to be part of this group. Uh, another information that as for the uh, extension of the mandate, it's being uh, discussed right now in New York by the second committee. Uh, it is mentioned that the improvements uh, proposed by the CSTD working group uh, should be implemented, further implemented, so it's very crucial. I have a very mixed feelings about the whole thing because we may be late in terms of uh, having an impact on this decision. On the other hand, I think it's a very useful uh, proposal to move forward for the future. Thank you. So thank you for volunteering. The CSTD will meet in May next year. We have ample time if uh, we decide also to send, send the, the essence of the report or to communicate uh, our own uh, self-evaluation to the CSTD if uh, we wish to do so. So thank you. I think we are done now with this round of, of this issue and the round of consultations around that. Uh, let me maybe ask um, the uh, host country to do the presentation of facilities and logistics uh, that, uh, and after that we would uh, start uh, the discussion on general outline. Uh, prior to that, I would maybe do overview of main lessons learned from 2014 uh, as it's suggested by the program. So may I invite the host country? Uh, Hartmut, please. Good morning, everyone, again. <clears throat> Before I go in details, I'd like to use one or two minutes to explain the way that the Brazilian Internet works. Since 1995, we have a Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, a multi-stakeholder uh, model, uh, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee is not a legal entity, but it's a coordination body. We have 21 members, uh, 12 elected in a bottom-up, transparent, uh, democratic process, electronic election process. The members are elected by the stakeholders. We have uh, different stakeholders, and uh, it's a self-election process, so they really represent the different stakeholders in the country. And the government has nine seats appointed by different ministries and agencies, but they don't have the majority, 21 in the total, only 12, uh, or only nine from the government, but 12 elected. Uh, the steering committee is not an uh, incorporated entity, but ha we put in place NICBR, Network Information Center, that is the non-for-profit legal entity who take over all the responsibilities, the legal responsibilities uh, all the employees, we have today around 200 people working full-time, uh, not only with domain names and not only with IP addresses, but we have also a CERT security group. We have a statistic group who go to the country, to the different stakeholders, and see the penetration of the Internet in the different uh, uh, areas, health, education, uh, e-government, uh, uh, the penetration of the Internet in households, and so on. And we also have a department for new projects that we try to put in place in agreements with universities and uh, other entities. Uh, this, the first uh, project or the first uh, uh, steering committee starts in 95, but now after 18 years, I think we have a long history. We organized two ICA meetings in the past. We organized one uh, IGF in Brazil, and we, last year we organized the WWW 2013 um, the web conference in Rio de Janeiro. So we have, let's say, a uh, uh, good history looking uh, backwards uh, in relation to organize in the country and also international events. This multi-stakeholder model works in a very, very uh, co a strong cooperation with the government, not because we have nine members on the board, but also because we have a strong input in the policy-making process for the government. So when we are sitting together, uh, Ambassador and others from the government, we already work together. We are not government, but we are working with the government, and that is very, very important. 
uh, we don't receive uh, money from the government, but we are working together. All the money is coming from our domain name system. We charge the domain names. We have 3.5 million domain names in the country. We charge an average of $12 a year. So we have our budget, we have our money, and with this money, the steering committee decides the activities. Uh, we have a, a small surplus that we can use for training, for capacity building, and we like to be part of the internet governance system, ecosystem worldwide. And uh, going over to the uh, IGF in Brazil, uh, I have the pr privilege to introduce in Istanbul a video we show seven minutes. I don't like to represent this again. I, we don't need to, to spend the same time. But I will uh, highlight two points. Uh, I like that you uh, introduce the first. The, the name is Beach. João Pessoa, Brazil, Beach. That is very, very important that you know the place. So this is the place that we will have our uh, event in Brazil. Because this place will be a temptation for everyone, <laughs> uh, we have a proposal that we start our meetings only at 12. Uh, we will have a flexible time in the morning. This time can be used for bilateral meetings, can be used for recovering from the night before, can be used on the beach, but we need to work. So we already have a strong proposal to work from, uh, we start at 12 with lunch, and then in 1 p.m. until 8 p.m., the same working time that we spent in other places, now we go to the second picture, we will have this nice place to work. This is one of the newest conference centers in Brazil, is in the city of João Pessoa on the right side, is the building that we will use for all the meetings, for the working, uh, the work, uh, working groups. The building in the middle will be for the, 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 the square with the exposition and will be the restaurant that we will have our meals, our lunch and our break. And the left building is the auditorium for the opening and the closing session. Uh, I don't like to go in details because we will have in January a meeting with uh, Shengetai and the Ondesa team to see the best way to use this, this space. But you see, we cannot use all the time only this place. We need to have our time split it in the morning for uh, recovering and for uh, some preparation. The idea is when you go back to the first place, all the hotels are on the beach. So we will have transport buses uh, from all the hotels that is only a four or five minutes uh, probably 10 minutes in the morning, uh, uh, transfer from the hotels to the conference place. So it's not a large city, no rush, uh, no, no problem with the, uh, the transport. So we will have easy, easy way to go from the hotels and from the beach to, to the uh, con convention center. My, my understanding is we have the same experiment uh, last year with the WWW 2013 conference in Rio de Janeiro. And on the end, everyone was happy. On the beginning, we have some questions. We are working. We cannot lose time. We are paying travel to go to a convention center. But I can uh, uh, say that we will have the same working time and the same uh, 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 opportunities to have exchange, uh, bilateral meetings, and a lot of time to exchange our ex ex experience. Before I go further, probably we need to discuss if you like to have this or not. So I give it back to the chair, and if there are questions, I am ready to, to answer. No, I mean, if you, if you have uh, further things to, to tell about uh, facilities, logistics, please go ahead, because I, I suspect that this uh, question on the uh, sort of time allocation for the meeting may take long, longer than just a few minutes. So uh, I, I would uh, suggest that you continue. We are, uh, you know that in Brazil we just have our election, so we are waiting to have some new, uh, new ministers and some, some new positions coming in place. Uh, we are waiting uh, uh, after Christmas, after the, the, the holidays, to have our first meeting in João Pessoa. Uh, and, but uh, the website will be ready uh, probably 
no later than the middle of January, so we will have all the information there. The big problem, the big question that probably some of you will have later is uh, how we reach the city of Jean Pessoa. Uh, <clears throat> for sure, the, the easiest hubs in Brazil are Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro from every part of the world. If you came in over Sao Paulo or over, over Rio, uh, there, is, uh, there are a lot of flights, more than 20 flights every day to Jean Pessoa. It's a three hours flight from Sao Paulo. Uh, so it's not the shortest distance, but you can come in from OS through Brasilia. Uh, you can come in, in uh, from Europe through Salvador and Recife. So other cities uh, offer uh, good connections. From Salvador to João Pessoa is only one hour flight. From Brasilia to João Pessoa is one and a half hour flight. So you, we have a lot of other uh, uh, connections and other ways to come in. The nearest city with an international airport is Recife. Recife is only 100 kilometers far away from João Pessoa, and there will be buses. Uh, very, very new highway, no, no problem with uh, uh, transport. We have a one and a half hour bus uh, from the city of Recife to João Pessoa. So uh, we will have all the information on our website uh, let's say very, very soon in January, so I don't have now all the details, all the numbers, the timing, but it will be uh, very, very easy to reach the city. Uh, some, uh, uh, I, I receive a lot of questions, uh, why you go to Jean Pessoa? Normally we have all the events in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, Rio, Brasilia, sometimes in other places. We try to show that Brazil is uh, not only the capitals, the, the, the big cities, but also the northeast, a very nice place, uh, very famous for vacation, very famous for, uh, for <coughs> uh, holidays, but they are working very, very hard to be uh, also very known for conferences, and uh, Brazil select the city as a typical northeast uh, city in the country with a very special uh, uh, restaurants and options for everyone. So you will be welcomed and you, you will feel the Brazilian flavor in João Pessoa. I hope that you will be very happy to be in this, uh, this city. Uh, all the details will be on the website very, very soon. Uh, I am waiting to have some local uh, information. I will be there very soon to, to work. And then Shengetai and the team from Odessa will be there again and we will uh, try to have everything on place let's say in the first, we have more time this, this year, it's November, so probably until February, everything is on the web page. So thank, thank you. Uh, any questions on logistics uh, to Hartmut? Myself, if you would uh, uh, speak a little bit about visa uh, issues which are uh, on everybody's mind, and then uh, hotels, will be there enough, uh, sort of the, the whole range of hotels available from five to one star, or, or uh, if you could uh, give us additional information on that, please. Uh, let me go back f uh, first to the hotels. The stars depends on the place. When you sleep on the beach, you have 100 stars, <laughs> so it's no problem. <laughs> but you have a three, four, and five-star hotel, and very cheap. When you go to the webpage, uh, João Pessoa as the city, you will see prices between $80 to $200, so are not expensive as Sao Paulo and Rio. Uh, a lot of flats of uh, very nice apartments, new hotels, and uh, the city offers uh, between uh, 20 and 40,000 uh, beds, so we uh, space for everyone, no problem. And from all the hotels will be transferred to the convention center. In relation to the visas, uh, Brazil tried to do the best. Uh, we have a very good experiment uh, last time with Net Mundial. We offer free visa. We don't have the electronic visa system as other countries, but we will send a letter to all our embassies that will be an, a, a joint agreement between uh, the Ministry of Foreign Relations and the Steering Committee uh, that we announce to all the embassies. If they have the invitation letter signed by us as organizers, they receive a free visa, uh, uh, visa for normally it's for 90 days, but if you came over for 30 days, you don't need uh, uh, to have a long visa, but uh, that will be guaranteed for all the participants, no problem. 
So thank you, Ginger. Uh, thank you very much. And I really welcome and love the idea of flexible hours and using the, mo the making the most of the hours in the day and what flexibility we can. And I can't think of a better place to try it out than in Brazil. I would ask that I wonder if we could postpone talking about the hours until we have a chance to look at how that will affect the hours for remote participation. Normally, that would be perfect to start later because then the people in the Americas and other our parts of the world wouldn't be getting up at 2 in the morning like we normally have to to attend meetings in Geneva when we're on remote. Since Brazil is in the Americas and there's a change in time zone, could we take the time to look at that first before or, or I ask that that be taken seriously into account because the people in Europe then might be uh, quite a bit later in the day and it might be difficult. So could we take that into account, please? I don't see any problem, but my answer is probably we need to go around the, the, the clock. So uh, yeah. if we have one continent that will be better served, we have others will be on the opposite side. So probably uh, I think we need to see the people who attend the conference and all others probably must be more flexible. So Sylvia, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm sure you are going to do that, but just to remind you that it's better that you suggest two, three, or four hotels where MAC members can be uh, have the option to uh, to be in those hotels because sometimes we use the breakfast or any other time to, to gather and to uh, work or discuss or whatever. And the other thing is I would suggest uh, everybody to that, that those who need visa to arrive to Brazil to do this tramit with a long time because uh, and, and not to ask our organizers at the end of, of a week before just the letter to or, to tramit the visa because it takes time. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Silvia, for a reminder. Avri, please. Thank you. I think the flexible hours is interesting, but what I think its net effect will be is that we will have a longer day from morning till night because what will happen is there will be rooms available and sessions possible and had hoc sessions possible. And so people will end up meeting from the normal times in the morning until late at night. So I think it's a charming idea, but, but I tend to think that what it will mean is that people will be working from morning until later at night instead of stopping at 6. So thank you, thank you for this reflection. We are now uh, still on the uh, sort of mood of questions. Uh, Murad, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Just a quick question. How many participants do the organizers expect to come in into our office? Or? Thank you. If we follow the uh, growing, probably 5,000, I don't know. Uh, after Istanbul, we are ready to receive 5,000, I don't know. Depends of the promotion, depends of the way that we have our marketing. But everyone is welcome. We received the, the, the input from Istanbul to do it better. So let's see if we reach 5,000. <laughs> I, actually, that, that is also quality that counts, not only uh, statistics. <laughs> uh, uh, Virat and then, and then Subi, and then we will move on. Jim, I, I just want to, uh, I think, again, the idea of beginning late is interesting because it allows us to um, get sort of meetings going and quality work done, and, um, and I think the proposal is carefully crafted that it doesn't lose us the working hours. I mean, they're still expecting us to work as many hours as we would, which is a good thing, uh, so that nobody starts getting an impression that this is a sort of a beach holiday uh, in a year when we are up for renewal. Um, I think um, the, the one challenge in terms of numbers, because the question you've asked is that I did some rough numbers, and from Asia, the destination adds um, between $800 to $1,000 extra as airline cost vis-a-vis -vis one of the large cities in Brazil, and from Europe about 800 pounds. So there is that challenge of um, 
uh, the cost, especially for some of the stakeholders, um, maybe not all, but some, some will certainly care about it, and the overall numbers will, in that sense, matter. So I suppose we must take into consideration that factor, and to the extent um, but there are no direct flights into the city itself, but close, and then there are, in some, from some places, three international flights have to be taken to get here. I think we must try and find a way to make it easy and, and inexpensive for a large number of stakeholders, especially from the academy and civil society to reach there. Um, somewhat indifferent to the, to the hours. I would just say that if you're doing a late start, let's keep in mind that the UN sort of conferences break at one, so rather than starting at 12, if you started at 11.30, then at least you have a 90-minute session in. Just keep some of those things in mind, plus, I think, uh, stuff that we have with regards to the um, hours in other places of the world. But that, you know, as you said, it will be good for one, not good for the other. That's not something you can help if you change timing. But please do keep in mind uh, these, these couple of issues as we finalize the exact time when we wish to begin this meeting uh, in uh, 2015 IGF. Thank you. So thank you. I would still, uh, uh, we're still on questions, not on comments. We will comment slightly later. Uh, Subi, please. Do you have a question? Yes, very much. Um, question for Hartmut. Uh, from NetMundial, we um, learned that there could be a format enhancing participation. So I'm, I'm wondering if, uh, because the uh, IGF Trust Fund and DESA has limitations on who they can fund, Will there be any attempts from CGI.br or the Brazilian administration to offset costs from developing country participations, especially for academia, civil society, or even small businesses? Because we'd like as many people to be there. So thank you, Juan Alfonso. Uh, Juan Alfonso. No, Chairman, I, I, wa I was going to make a comment because no, everybody's no, doing comment, but no, if you said no. that comments are later, we'll, we'll, I will yeah, do we'll it later. We'll come back to comments, and, and uh, uh, Juan Afolso, it's a good news for you. Our interpreters, uh, who are extremely professional, uh, uh, just uh, told us that uh, they could translate Spanish and Russian to English and French. So next time when you will intervene, you, you are welcome to speak Spanish because interpreters will translate you to English and French. So no further comments. Isan, please. Uh, yes, uh, I have a question about the season. Uh, is this uh, holy season or off season, uh, the month of uh, uh, November? Thank you. Please, you have two questions now. Uh, no, it's normal. It's summer. We, uh, we not summer, but it's springtime. We are going to the summer, but it's a nice uh, weather, a nice time. November. Uh, the season uh, is only Christmas and January, until Carnival in Brazil is in February. So it's normal working time, but uh, it's a very nice place to enjoy uh, all the neighborhood. The question in relation if CGI is willing to support. Uh, we have the budget only, with the only in, uh, for the expenses for the infrastructure. We are not in charge to support any travel or any facility. Uh, that is impossible because the infrastructure we, we uh, used most of the money. The host agreement signed between the Brazilian government uh, will be supported by CGI. So we will pay the expenses uh, for the event, and we are ready to support all the infrastructure, uh, to have the hubs, to have everything in place, but there's no availability, av availability for any travel support. For sure, we will offer lunch, and there will be a break in the middle of the afternoon, probably not, a, a, again, the dinner, or not barbecue, no churrasco, but we will have some way that we can work from 1 to 4 or 4.30 and from 5 to 8 or 8.30 that we don't lose working time. And uh, my proposal is that we work more than six hours a day. We can work 7 to 7.30 hours if we really have short breaks. So thank, thank you. Um, uh, Benedicto, you wanted to yes. say something? Yes, uh, very brief, just a few comments in regard to some points that were made. Uh, uh, we are aware there is a challenge in terms of uh, the 
maybe the costs involved in relation to other places in, in the world, the distances. Uh, when you, you listen to, to Glaser saying that from some cities it's one hour and a half or three hours flight, uh, from an European perspective that might seem very large because you can cross most of Europe <laughs> in that time. But uh, I think that's part of the, the interest of, of having more geographical uh, dispersion and distribution. I think that that's the kind of challenge that will be faced uh, if we do not hold meetings outside uh, New York or, or Geneva, that, but that, that, that's part of the game. Uh, one, one thing that is important maybe in terms of the time difference is to realize that we will be closer it will be beneficiary to those that are closer to us, uh, meaning Latin America, United States, Canada, they will be one to two or three hours difference behind. But for Europe, uh, two or three hours after our time in Brazil, but there will be a challenge, of course, for people that will be in Asia. We face this difficulty when we were, were organizing Net Mundial. We hold many conferences, and for people in Asia, sometimes they had to to stay uh, awake the, during the, the night because we started sometimes working at 2 p.m. For them, it was 2 a.m. But th that's, again, that's part of the, the overall challenge. Uh, I don't think from the moment we make a decision to, to hold meetings in different places because we want to diversify, that's part of the equation that we, we must face. But we will be ready, as Glaser was saying, to make uh, the most we can to overcome any difficulty that is faced by participants. Uh, in regard to the financial capacity, well, Brazil is a developing country. We have been participating and to, to the extent possible in many processes, including as, in, as donors for the IGF Secretariat, we have made consistently contributions into other processes, but there is a real challenge to go beyond some uh, some context and providing financial assistance is something that I think is not uh, within the, the kind of uh, financial effort we, we could be prepared uh, uh, as helpful as we can be in the process. Thank you. I'd like to, to join the information about the visa. Mm. Silvia mentioned you need to do it as soon as possible. Okay, you can do it as soon as possible. But uh, first, no visa on arrival. The visa must be requested before. But you don't need to do it one year before. It's very easy. The Brazilian uh, consulates works in a very easy way. I know that for normal travel, probably you have some difficulties. But we are sending letters to all the embassies. And the, experiment, the experience with uh, Net Mundial was very, very, very positive. So, Silvia, no danger for Argentina, no need for visa. <laughs> so, thank you. It, was not, it was not about Argentina. It was a general concern. And uh, visa, usually visa issue affects uh, mostly participants from Africa. Uh, and, and, of course, Brazil is a big country with a wide uh, network of uh, embassies. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you're not representing in every country. So as a result, uh, those who, are, who live in countries where Brazil do not have uh, representations, either uh, embassy or diplomatic or uh, consular, they will need to uh, find other, other solution. So Ginger and I see Peter, uh, but very briefly, we, we need to move on. Uh, yes, my question is, is very brief, um, but since we don't have Judy here anymore to ask about facilities and access for the disabled, could you please let us know how that will go? And Peter, maybe you can ask your question if you have any. Yes, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss later the very flexible use of time that's suggested. My question is, are there any limitations posed by the venue itself, for example, is the venue only open for 12 hours and so we can have it from 9 o'clock in the morning till only 9 o'clock at night, or is in fact it open for the entire time and we can be very free how, how we come to use it? So are there limitations imposed by the venue itself? Peter, you know me. I never will make an announcement if we have some limitation. 24 hours. You can stay there. You don't need to go back to the hotel. Uh, uh. Thank, thank you, Hartmut. Uh, you don't have limitations. I suspect. 
yeah, the place is available, is uh, yeah. a, a no, access no. for everyone, no problem with uh, disabilities. It's pre prepared for access for everyone. So, of, of course, uh, our hosts n never, never have any limitations, and we have benefited enormously from, from generosity of all hosts. Though there are limitations because the site is secured by UN security. Mm. And to my knowledge, there might be limitations based on security concerns. So, therefore, uh, we need also to factor that in. Mm. Uh, Marilyn and Patrick. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Cade. My question is um, about Wi-Fi access. Uh, in the past, we've had a few situations where um, not all of the hotels had um, uh, free Internet access. And one of the benefits for um, groups that were working was they could stay, they could come early or uh, stay late to be able to work online. I know Hartmouth is tied up, so let me wait just a minute. So, so the question about uh, access uh, to the facility, um, perhaps we could just park the idea that, um, and what I mentioned, uh, Arthmet, is not all hotels in all cities provide uh, free Internet access, and that has in the past been an additional cost. So many groups have wanted to come early or stay a bit later in the facility to be able to, you know, do their routine reporting and work, et cetera. So the question of how much access we can have is important to follow up on. We don't need an answer right now because, of course, the U.N. security issue is a valid, um, uh, access is valid. But perhaps we could just come back to that. Thank you. Uh, Patrick, do you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, Hartman, I just wanted to um, suggest that if there's a if there's an opportunity to put together, as I'm sure you will, you know, very soon, uh, the the list of needs and sort of like a wedding wish list of the the kinds of things that the private sector can bring to the table, in kind services, whether it's Wi-Fi access or that kind of thing, the earlier that we can get that, the better, because um, you know I can speak for for my company. I know we'd love to participate in supporting the event, and to the extent that you can help provide details on what that, uh, what, you know, how that help could be best directed earlier the better. That would be very good. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Remaining technology neutral. ISO, please. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to ask if there, uh, there, uh, there will be an, any uh, pre-conference even high-level leaders meeting prior to the IGF in Brazil. Thank you. So maybe that's that's the question to Benedicto first, than, than, rather than to Hartman. Just an indication if you, if you have thought about it. Right. No, I think this is part of the discussion we are having on how to, to shape the meeting. Uh, we have heard some interesting points in regard, for example, even the location of the meeting should be in the first day or on the last day, or, or I, heard, I read in one of the contributions that there could be a point in merging the high level with the opening ceremony. So I think there are a number of ideas we'd like to, to further receive input from the MAG and, and maybe collectively try to uh, give us some more elements so that we can come back and, and bring a, a proposal in that regard. But there is, for the moment, there is no, let's say, uh, uh, f finalized proposal in that regard. Thank you. So thank you. Um, there was a question you want to answer? Hartmut, please. In, in relation, uh, Marilyn, to for the Internet service in the hotels, I don't visit all the hotels, but uh, <clears throat> we will work with all the hotels, and we like to have an answer very, very soon. I don't can answer now. Uh, I know that the uh, conven convention center will be have the best connectivity that is available, so there will not, prob not be a problem. Only to remember, we always try to have the academic network connected to the convention center. That will be the case also in, in Jean Pessoa. And the hotels, I need to visit all of them. I will do it after Christmas. So uh, I hope that I have, can answer this in probably uh, no later than January. So Marilyn, please give me some time. 
So thank you, thank you, Hartmut. And actually, uh, lesson. And if you would allow me to go to the uh, next agenda item to discuss the general outline uh, of preparatory process and structure of the meeting, unless Mark, you have a question. Thank you, Chair. Mark of our UK government. Just a quick question: uh, Who will chair the IGF? Is th is that decided yet? Just to complete my knowledge. Thank you. Uh, no, there is not yet a decision on that. This is being discussed uh, in the context of the Brazilian Steering Committee in consultation with the branches of government interested. Thank you. The one, one thing is very, very clear, Mark. That will be Brazilian national and Brazilian official, high official. Um, I, would, I would suggest now uh, to stop uh, uh, questioning Hartmut. Thank you very much for your um, uh, presentation and, and the information that you shared. Maybe during the uh, lunchtime, uh, pr 10 minutes prior the beginning of the uh, second session, you could put the video on that uh, those who are in the room can uh, remind themselves uh, how beautiful uh, the, the video was and how beautiful the place is. Uh, but not it should stop at three uh, at three o'clock so let me now move to agenda item three as uh, we agreed uh, to discuss the general outline of the preparatory process and the structure of the meeting and and indeed we, we I would like to uh, sort of uh, hear uh, from the mag members how they feel uh, we should approach uh, the the uh, uh, preparations and uh, but without going maybe in too much in details, but in general, general outline, as well as how meetings should be structured, whether we, uh, we should uh, have this uh, uh, proposal that we heard from uh, Hartmut uh, uh, moving uh, time uh, from, from to, to noon, starting time of the sessions to noon, whether we should have uh, um, this uh, high-level sessions at the beginning or at the end, whether we should have how many uh, main sessions we have, how many workshops we should have, uh, whether workshops should be equal uh, uh, length, like 90 minutes. Please keep in mind that there, we're still subject of UN interpretation rules that uh, interpreters work in, in shifts of three hours. And uh, if we uh, do not stick to, to those, then there is additional cost uh, attached to the, to the bill and, and all, all these things. This, this should be uh, kind of a free-floating uh, conversation of, of the MAG. Uh, we heard already from Avri uh, uh, some ideas about uh, the sort of moving or using all, all the time we have uh, in order to prepare uh, the uh, Brazil meeting and so on. But before doing that, I would like uh, maybe to just to remind uh, the main uh, conclusions from yesterday's conversation uh, that we also need to always fact factor in. Um, I, I think we, we need also to discuss uh, further fine-tune rather than discuss the, the way how we select workshops. There was, there was a call for more transparency and explanations and, and uh, uh, feedback from, from the MAG in terms of um, uh, how, th how the uh, workshops were selected. There is a, a recurrent issue of the organization of the main sessions, how main sessions should be shaped how many main sessions should we have, how many speakers on those main sessions we should have, how we interact with the, with the public uh, during the main sessions and whether we need to have main sessions at all. Maybe main sessions should be called simply workshops and, and would follow the same uh, uh, approach as others. Uh, important question of outputs. Outputs, it's uh, uh, always on our agenda, how we strengthen outputs and whether uh, current outputs uh, but that we have, uh, chairs, uh, chair summary, the uh, compilation of um, outputs from all workshops that are provided by organizers of the workshops, not all of them provide, but, but in theory they should, uh, the uh, compilation of uh, information, what has happened since previous IGFs in terms of decisions uh, by organization or actions by organizations involved in uh, internet governance ecosystem as a result of uh, interaction in the previous IGF, meaning uh, uh, what decisions have been made throughout the year, where, on what topics, and how 
IGF has influenced those, those decisions, uh, as well as any other outputs that we may wish to have, best practice compilations, and, and so on. Uh, outstanding question that, that we did not hear actually yesterday, but uh, that was uh, clearly spelled out uh, during the uh, sort of uh, informal MAG gathering after the end of the meeting was uh, about um, uh, the uh, dynamic coalitions, how we use dynamic coalitions uh, in, in the process and what input we could expect from them and how we communicate uh, and coordinate activities of preparation with those uh, in, of dynamic coalitions. The same applies for the regional and national workshops, uh, how uh, and whether we involve them and if, if yes, how. And finally, communication strategy. Sometimes I have a feeling that uh, we're uh, uh, we're talking about improved outputs, but in reality, outputs are there. They are not sufficiently communicated. And if we find a way how to communicate, an example of sending uh, by Turkey the, uh, the chair's statement uh, or chair's summary uh, to the IGF Planet Potentiary to inform the discussion there, I think is a good example of uh, uh, proactive communication. Uh, we need to maybe think uh, whether that could be a practice in the future that uh, the host of the country sends that uh, report not only to uh, ITU uh, but also to any other UN body where that might be, uh, 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 which might be interested in, for instance, CSTD, and a request to publish that report as a, a document of the, of the formal session to the ECOSOC, to the General Assembly, to the Second Committee of General Assembly. I mean, w these are things that we need to, to think through and uh, uh, factor them in uh, when we're talking about uh, improved outputs uh, from uh, IGF. So floor is open, and I see Avri is first in line. Avri, please. Thank you. Um, I'm a great number of topics there. I'm only going to touch one of them for now, and as, as the conversation goes on, may contribute to others. I think for me, one of the most important goals is that we minimize the number of talking head sessions. We minimize the number of sessions that are basically a panel of famous and or intelligent people talking at an audience. This, this, this goes back to what I was, you know, alluding to yesterday in terms of having participants in a forum, you know, and, and not talking heads and, and an audience. And, and so we have to sort of look at how do we bring as many participants as possible into the conversations, into the discussions that we're having. And that the work of the MAG is, is to look at preparing the ground for that, preparing the ground for making workshops really work sessions. You know, in some cases it might be that we have done continuing work from one, from last year to this year, you know, best practices is one of the issues, but other themes may also be open to that. And we've done work on it so-called intersessionally, you know, but work on it in preparation for the meeting so that we do have issues that have been, that have been sort of pulled apart, that, that we've collected the various views on, that we've very much followed some of the, the net mundial techniques that were developed in, in terms of, you know, put, putting various texts in front of people and collecting viewpoints and, and going through various iterative processes to come up with these sort of more consensus-based discussions. Sessions should have facilitators, perhaps brief introductions. Sessions, perhaps those that aren't continuous working projects, sh should have sets of readings that, that, that bring out and then people come and discuss those. Th there are probably other, many other ways to facilitate and to make workshops workshops and, and not just more opportunities for many sessions of, of talking head panelists. I, uh, for example, I would argue that a workshop should have no more than two or three facilitators. 
and, and that a workshop that has a panel is not a workshop, it's a main session. So, so that, was, uh, the, the, that would be the first you know, strong indication I would like to put on that, that we really make these meetings a forum and, and, and not just an, another talk fest. Thank you. So thank you, Avri. I would like uh, our secretariat to add on the list of documentation that uh, should be sent to all MAG members, the guidelines for workshop organizers, how they should uh, organize workshops, the uh, evaluation methodology that we have uh, for uh, how MAG should evaluate um, uh, workshops, that's in anticipation of our discussion. Because many things that Avri, you mentioned, uh, they are already written down. The, the thing is, not necessarily all uh, workshop organizers and actual also MAG members organizing main sessions follow those guidelines. There are many reasons for that. It's not a criticism, uh, but uh, uh, that's the reality. Uh, but maybe we need to see whether some kind of uh, fine-tuning of those guidelines should be done uh, before uh, we enter in, I mean, and then we send them out to uh, all workshop organizers and ask to follow. Uh, I have Murad and then uh, Subi and then Marilyn waiting in line, and there is um, uh, uh, Lydia, no, Lydia, Yulia, sorry. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, as, I, as outlined by some uh, MAG members yesterday's session, I think uh, we should elaborate a communication strategy for the next IGF, and the focus should be given to uh, two important stakeholders. The governments, first the governments. Um, although uh, there was a, a progress in Istanbul regarding the participation of governments, Lots remain to be done in order to increase substantially government participation, especially those from developing countries, not only in the annual forum itself, but also in the, in the preparatory process. I totally concur with the intervention made yesterday by my uh, Mexican colleague regarding the lack of visibility of IGF within the diplomatic community here in Geneva, especially among permanent missions. In this context, I suggest that the IGF Secretariat reflect on the possibility to organize an information session to uh, permanent missions here in Geneva, as was uh, brilliantly done by ICANN last July. The session could be very useful in terms of uh, liaising directly with the head of missions by inf informing them on the work that has been done so far by the IGF, but also the advantages that governments could reap by increased involvement in the IGF process as well as in other IG processes. Uh, the, the second st important stakeholders uh, which uh, attention should be uh, given to, it is um, important also to uh, enlarge uh, the, the, uh, the number of universities and the research uh, institutes involved in the IGF process. Uh, regarding the structure of the event, it would be better to reduce the number of the workshops. The focus should be put on the quality of the panelists and uh, the subsequent debate, and uh, also uh, making sure that the, the workshops uh, are more interactive. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, next was uh, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. I really appreciate the um, suggestion that um, Avri made about uh, turning our thinking around and thinking about not an audience but um, participants. And but I would suggest and ask for others who are here, who are newer to the process, to also comment. My experience has been that we need a range of opportunities and formats, and that sometimes particularly new people come into a environment, they may wish to become active participants initially, or they may wish to take more of a learning approach in some areas where they're um, learning about a broader topic. So I'd, I'd like us to think about a range of different uh, approaches 
including the idea that some are very highly participatory. The second thing I would just say about, and it is a comment I have made since the planning for Athens, and that is I am cautious about using a rule of reducing the number of workshops because workshops are how stakeholders justify getting the funding or the management approval to be able to um, um, uh, or justify themselves taking the time to be able to participate. And for many of us, we are self-funded participants. And um, in looking for uh, just attending an event will not bring the number of participants. Many of those who wish to attend an IGF do need and want to have an active particip participation role. So when we think about the number of workshops, I also want us to keep in mind the diversity of the participation and the needs of the participants. On the issue of um, developing country participation, I think we need to take more seriously the need for a different approach to invitations. Just having an invitation on the website that's a general invitation is not always sufficient. And I think um, within the workshop organizers and the main session organizers, we need to put together a more formalized uh, invitation, which includes the description of expectation. Uh, and perhaps standardize that because uh, I found myself uh, last year as uh, as a uh, co-organizer of a main session and I saw others that we were often sort of reinventing the wheel. So I think if we can come up with a sort of a standardized invitation to speakers and to panelists that can be customized, that that may be helpful. Um, I know that it has been suggested that perhaps, and I really think we need to look at innovative um, formats, and it, some have suggested debates, but I find debates myself one of the most exclusionary uh, meeting approaches unless they are structured in a way that they then include significant audience rebuttal and engagement. So I will just um, share that comment. We don't today have a participant's guidebook or handbook or guide to effective participation. And I think we need to be thinking about that and also thinking about language translation of, uh, you know, tips for the new participant in some way. We offer them a sort of a rapid fire, you know, indoctrination once they're there. But I think that could really help if we could have a three or four page, you know, uh, sort of a um, um, roadmap to the galaxy of the IGF, perhaps. And finally, to comment further on um, our Algerian colleagues' comment about um, inclusion of governments, I am a big fan of our working very uh, significantly to increase the participation of all stakeholders and in particular to reach into different ministries that have been involved up to now and to incorporate participation by governments, uh, officials in a number of ministries, healthcare, education, economic development, others into the workshops, not just into the main sessions. And when that has happened, and I've been fortunate to have contributed to that, that has really, I think, deepened the uh, interest and the attention and developed new follow-up opportunities for engagement back at a national level. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, if, if, if I may ask uh, uh, MAG members to be cognizant of time and try to uh, be concise, as concise as possible. Uh, Subi, please. Thank you, Yanis. Um, quick comment on workshops. Um, I think uh, the number of workshops reflect the themes 
that we choose to work with, they could be um, correlated with um, and proportionately included depending upon how many themes and how many proposals per theme. I strongly advocate not dramatically reducing but finding a balance between the number of workshops. I support the fact that workshops, whether you're a speaker or a participant, are an opportunity to bring in new voices. Um, new formats are an innovation from uh, last year, whether they're flash sessions or unconferencing. Um, these are things that I want to see retained when we go forward. Also a strong suggestion for an open space that could either be on the beach as Hartmut uh, suggested, but we want one in the venue where people can informally congregate and have free discussions, which is visible and not just in some corner. Um, main session. Uh, there was conversation about too many speakers and some or too little, but it's also about the ability of how you're planning it and how interactive you can make it. There are, There is no blanket solution or a one-size format that I'd like to advocate. There are some sessions which need people who are experts to come in and, and advise and engage with new participants, and I don't think we should undervalue their importance or value. Um, about six sub-themes, also better engagement between national and regional IGFs. Uh, the one thing that I'd really like to see, and, and I'm hoping for it this year, is dehyphenation of regional and national IGFs. They're not one and the same things. Regional IGFs have a completely different host of issues, and national IGFs come with a different set of problems. I also hope that we can put the spotlight and not do away with main sessions, because main sessions are helpful in, in uh, um, highlighting the commitment that the IGF holds this year to a particular issue. And surveillance session at Bali is an example of that. Outreach, very strong comment. Uh, we need blogs. Uh, the chair's blog has worked wonderfully, but we need to have an engagement throughout the year and maybe an outreach and communications committee, which has MAG members volunteering, and I'd certainly like to be one of them uh, to take this forward. Um, youth, while we're bringing in new voices and new participants, I'd also like to see them stay with us. There were many young members who said they felt uncomfortable. So maybe IGF ambassadors from amongst us, uh, MAG members, and even those from the community who are veterans at this, who could probably wear a badge that I am a MAG member or I am an IGF person and I'm happy to speak to young people is something that would be very helpful. Um, and uh, just the last point on the schedule. The schedule this year worked really well, but we do need a guideline, a small guidebook for new participants who can help them negotiate these pieces. That's all for now. Thank you very much, Subi, for your uh, comments and suggestions. Um, Ginger, please. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank Avery for her reminding us uh, that we need to take the strategy and evaluation of the workshops and the design of the workshops into account right from the very beginning. And so I appreciate the chair's note that these guidelines do exist but often are not followed. At this point, I do think it's important to emphasize that remote participation should be part of the strategy and design of the workshop, so the guidelines for organizers and moderators, when they are distributed and updated as Chair suggested, should include that element. I would like to volunteer to work on that, on those guidelines. Um, Diplo Foundation does have some established guidelines, so I think we probably can draw on those guidelines, combine them with the, the existing guidelines, and, and make sure that those are sent out with the call for proposals for workshops. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you for vol volunteering uh, to look at the issue. Uh, a long, long list. I, I'm just uh, read, reading it out that you know the order. Uh, Julia, Peter, Fatima, uh, Juan and Falso, Mark, Angelic, uh, Anna, Izumi, Virat, and Maria Victoria. So for the moment. And then Robert. Uh, in that order, please, Julia. Thank you. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, Julia Mornet. Um, I just wanted, actually, I completely agree with, uh, with Avery, and we know that the guideline uh, exists. Um, I wanted to touch a word on uh, workshop evaluation. We know, uh, I mean, the workshop evaluation after the workshop has taken place. We know that we do have this assessment form, but which is mostly 
focused on gender perspective and gender participation, but I think we also need to include the inclusiveness, how the audience was included in the discussion during the workshop. Um, so this is what I wanted to, um, uh, to, uh, to underline. And as it's the uh, first time that I take the floor, I wanted also to congratulate the new uh, MIC members because I'm a departing uh, MIC member. Thank you. So thank you, thank you very much, Julia. Of course, the very pertinent comments, but I would like to uh, invite MAG members to follow the order of our discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, uh, for the moment, I would invite you to concentrate on general outline of the preparations for IGF 2015 and the uh, structure of the meeting, because the, the, the program, as you see, uh, is uh, sort of built in, in a way that we come from one uh, bigger question to smaller question and, and to, uh, d down uh, to all necessary elements. So therefore, for the moment, we, we, we need, uh, as a result of this discussion, I would like really to design the architecture of the, of the um, IGF meeting uh, that we have. So uh, the, the, let's say the, the, out, the structure and after that, we will go inside, and then we will do all the necessary works uh, inside. That said, uh, Peter, please. Thank you, Chair. Peter Dengate Trash. Uh, I also agree with Avery on the aspects of a good workshop, uh, including fewer talking heads and papers published in advance and reading lists, but uh, make the point that that's not the only form of engagement, and it assumes that people are all as diligent and connected as the most learned of us and another sector of, uh, of the community are those who are coming to learn and who have no previous expertise and who need to be taught and who benefit from having experts discuss things. Um, I go to sessions to learn from experts like that. So we might also have a set of protagonists around well-developed diverging views where a debate format properly run can work best, particularly as Marilyn suggests it leads to a good Q&A. Afterwards. So I think what that means is that we must decide for all sessions in advance what the goal of the session is very clearly, whether it is to inform or to engage or to develop a discussion point not yet ready for decision or something else which might include all of those. So in t as, with all as with all planning, a clear view of the strategic goal of the session is required. And that leads to another topic which I want to talk more about later, which is more and more rigorous formal evaluation of all the sessions. I've looked at some of the reports. There seem to be a lot of sessions for which reports haven't been completed, etc. So we, I think we need to up the ante on that. But uh, Mr Chairman, you've asked for a structural uh, debate. And I, I think the way to begin that is at the very highest level and uh, is to ask what are the building blocks of the session? Are we still looking at having the traditional building blocks of IGFs, which is opening sessions, uh, you know, workshops, is all of that up for redecision, or are we, do we assume that we're going to be using many of the same sort of tools? Perhaps you could help set the scene for that kind of discussion. Is it completely open, or should we begin with some or all of the previous building blocks? No, I, I think that everything is in our hands. Uh, you see, when, when uh, uh, Eiffel Tower was built, <coughs> Uh, the engineer, uh, Gustav Eiffel, was heavily criticized because no one really saw the value of that building. Today that brings about 13 trillion uh, euros uh, to the economy of France, uh, simply because that was a visionary uh, sort of uh, project, and uh, the, same, the same here. Uh, everything is, is up in the air, and we can, we can reshape it in any way we think uh, the um, participants will benefit the most uh, from being uh, at IGF and, and uh, engaging in IGF. So uh, building blocks, I, I think those most probably will remain the same. The, um, we will be doing this as usually as a Lego where everybody will come up with a, with a small piece and, and uh, our task is to uh, put those pieces uh, together uh, in the most appropriate and most useful way. So we have uh, clear limitations. We have uh, four days for, of the meeting. We have uh, three, uh, sorry, two times uh, three hours uh, sort of session limitations and whether we use, uh, we split those three hours in two as we usually do in order to maximize uh, the work, number of workshops. 
or we keep them long three hours, that's up, up to us to decide, again, to the best of our uh, knowledge and experience in, in doing that. So uh, I think that there will be combination of, of, of both, some traditions, some, uh, some uh, innovations that we will test. Uh, for instance, the uh, best practice forums, which uh, were uh, sort of present at the very beginning of uh, the existence of IGF, then they disappeared and they appeared last, last year and seemed to be, uh, were very appreciated by everybody. We heard it yesterday. So that does not necessarily mean that everything we have up till now need to uh, 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 remain in the agenda. So maybe something could, we could drop for a year, for two, uh, or, or at all. Again, it is up to us, we, uh, this is our task actually, to uh, make this event uh, the most use, uh, useful for participants as possible, that everybody who would come would say, indeed, my investment was useful, and not that I say, no, it's total waste of money, total waste of time, I will never come again here. So this is something I, I wouldn't love to hear at the end of the IGF Brazil. Uh, so that, that's why everything is in our hands, uh, in other words. Uh, Fatima, please. Thanks, Mr. Chair. This is Fatima for the record. Can I speak in Spanish? Do we have translation? Perfect. Thank you. Um, en mi opinión, este año, si queremos eh, fortalecer el IGF, como venimos diciendo desde NET Mundial, Perfecto. Working. Eh, en mi opinión, decía que este año, si queremos fortalecer el IGF, como venimos diciendo desde la reunión de, del Mundial, eh, ¿no? ¿No working? Yes English, yes, English is coming through on Channel 3. And French is coming through on Channel 2, please. Again? <laughs> ok. Como decía, eh, desde que si, este año queremos fortalecer el IGF, como venimos diciendo desde la reunión de NET Mundial, en mi opinión tenemos que poner el foco en la calidad y no tanto en la cantidad como si a lo mejor pasó otros años. Eh, desde mi punto de vista, y especialmente teniendo en cuenta lo que nos han explicado desde Brasil, que va a ser el host, respecto de cómo va a estar diseñado probablemente la reunión, eh, en este caso, este año, el año que viene, perdón, deberíamos tener eh, menos cantidad de sesiones principales eh, y de menor duración de tiempo, como ayer mencionaba, probablemente de dos horas, eh, con menor cantidad de panelistas. Eh, acá no buscamos panelistas importantes para la foto, sino buscamos panelistas que sepan dialogar con la comunidad. Como decíamos muchas veces en el AQGF, los panelistas y moderadores tienen que tener el rol de, que Sócrates decía, de la mayéutica, dejar que la comunidad sea la que hable y con el resto de, de los participantes. No, si, si están allí como invitados, ya sabemos que son expertos, no necesitamos escucharlos que vayan a explicar lo que ya saben. Eh, respecto de los workshops, en mi opinión, no deben correr en paralelo con las sesiones principales, eh, deben ser las sesiones principales el momento de hablar con toda la comunidad, Toda la comunidad debe estar presente en las sesiones principales y no se debe superponer con los workshops. Eh, en respecto de la evaluación de los workshops y en esta propuesta de reducir el número, también debemos poner el foco en la, en la calidad y no en la cantidad y evitar que corran en paralelo tantas cantidades de workshops y probablemente este, en algún año no puedan eh, ser aprobados todos los workshops que se presenten y bueno, se podrán presentar el año siguiente, pero deben, deberán estar enfocados directamente con los temas y subtemas propuestos para este año que decidamos en estas reuniones. Eh, por otro lado, los miembros del MAC, en mi opinión tenemos un rol de ayuda y de asistencia a los miembros de la comunidad que presenten los workshops 
lo venimos diciendo hace algunos años, pero luego no sucede esto. Hay gente que presenta workshop y los presenta mal porque nadie les asistió, <coughs> perdón, ni les colaboró en cómo presentarlo. Por otro lado, en mi opinión también tiene que, tenemos que tener los miembros del MAC un, un rol de enlace muy fuerte con los IGFs regionales y los IGFs nacionales para lograr que se involucren en los IGFs, en el IGF global y que además eh, no se vaya a presentar un reporte de lo que están haciendo, que sea una ses cada vez sesiones más interactivas y que se puedan compartir mejores prácticas en los IGF regionales y nacionales. Eh, por otro lado, lo que decía ayer, vuelvo a repetir, además de las reglas que ya tenemos los miembros del MAC, necesitamos reglas en cuanto a la cantidad de eh, sesiones principales en las cuales podemos estar involucrados como organizadores este año hubo una percepción de captura en la organización de algunas sesiones principales por muy pocas personas. No necesitamos que pase esto otra vez ni que se perciba, aunque no sea real de esa manera. Debemos tener un límite en la cantidad que se pueden proponer. Eh, los reportes de los workshops también tienen que ser reportes vivos que se puedan seguir nutriendo a través de, del año y no que queden muertos en la página del IGF y no se retomen nuevamente. Eh, también hubo una propuesta que se hizo en la mesa redonda de creación de capacidades de este año, en la cual Verónica Cretu propuso la idea de que haya un eh, newcomer lunch o algo similar para que la gente que va por primera vez a un IGF pueda obtener una guía eh, respecto de qué sesiones participar, eh, cómo eh, aprovechar mejor esta reunión. Y en mi opinión, la creación de capacidades no se hace dentro de las sesiones principales, sino que se hace previamente con los pre-webinars que hicimos y además con eh, las sesiones de orientación que también ofrecimos y que esperamos continuar nuevamente este año. Y me voy a detener aquí. Muchas gracias. So, thank you very much, uh, Fatima. Thank you, interpreters. We have one, though, technical issue, and I'm not uh, consulting interpreters. When you see that on the screen, uh, the uh, transcription is done uh, on, from channel one. And if uh, channel one is not in English, so then we're losing transcription. Can you do it that, no, you can't. Uh, technician, Seem, seems that that's a question to technician. We, w we would need uh, that in whatever language uh, participants speak, that uh, English language is always on channel one to make sure that we have transcription always available in English. It is very useful to have uh, 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 the translation from also from uh, Spanish and Russian, uh, w which was promised uh, because of knowledge of those languages by interpreters, but we need English translation on channel one. Please, uh, if that's possible, give me a sign. Is it possible? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, I suspect, also will be speaking in Spanish, uh, Juan Alfonso. We will, we will try. No, I will speak in English. Uh, I appreciate the gesture of the translators. But, well, just, to, just in case, I will follow in English. Uh, Chairman, I'm new at the MAG, so I'm having... Well, I, I have to behave, and I'm having some, some problem with that, because for me it's difficult to think about the structure of the event without talking first of the themes and the objectives of the, of the event. I, I want to call your attention that, well, of course, MAG has been working very well, all the MAGs, since every IGF has been better than the previous one. Since, since, since the beginning in Athens. So that, that's a recognition of the, of the work of the MAG. But I think that we all know that next year should be the best MAG, the best IGF of all because of two reasons. The first reason is in the year that's going to be held. It's a, it's a year in which different processes regarding Internet governance are going on place and maybe will crystallize or not, but are, are going, and that's increasing. There's also some other processes going on, very important, that relates with IGF, mainly not directly, is the new 
sustainable development goals, you know, the end of the millennium development goals and the new sustainable development goals, and also, well, as you know, the OASIS overall 10-year review, it will also that year. That raises the bar very hard, high for all. And another reason that this IGF, in my view, should be special is that it's being held again in the American continent in South America, a continent that is struggling for development in the last year, and especially in a country, Brazil, that has had a tremendous success in the last 10 years, raising millions of people out of poverty. So that also put a spotlight in, in hosting this uh, IGF in Brazil. In this sense, I think that we have the bar very high, and we have to plan for a very, um, um, a, a, as the report from the work group of, of improvement, the IGF said, that have relevant outcomes. We, we have to, to plan it that way. And in my view, the key to plan to have that result is the theme and the main theme that we select and the themes that we select. We need to have coherence. We need to select themes that are really resonate not only with the people that will be there, but with everybody that will be following. I have some ideas regarding that. I don't know if this is the moment to put it forward because uh, I, I want to behave, I want to be disciplined, Chairman, and you said that now we should stick to structure and, and to planning. But for me, it's, it's, I think that if we put that objective first and, and we see, put the themes, then we can move around on how the tools that we have in our toolbox and all the Lego parts that you mentioned, how we can put it around and move it around in order to enhance that objectives and that impact that we, going, that we need to have. Because I think that the IGF, next IGF, should have a high impact. So I'm in your hands. I have some concrete ideas regarding themes and, and tags, as you, uh, as you say, but I, I will put it forward when you ask me, Chairman. Thank you. I appreciate uh... Uh, Juan Alfonso, your cooperation, and you see this is on the agenda for afternoon, uh, as soon as we will be done with this conversation, and we'll come to some kind of conclusion. Uh, let me, uh, following your intervention, be more specific. Uh, so when we're talking about the general outline and structure of the meeting, what I was uh, willing to hear, and I still am willing to hear, whether we start uh, as traditionally at uh, 9, 10 o'clock, or we go uh, following a proposal of, uh, of the host country, we start at noon. Uh, do we do, uh, we try to fill um, all possible slots in, in the schedule, and we, uh, traditionally we have 10, 10 parallel sessions. Uh, do we do 10 again, or do we do five, or do we do 15? Please, please, this is the structure of the meeting. Do we do uh, a grand, grand opening uh, with the ministers at the beginning, or we do grand finale at the end when we invite ministers, or maybe in the middle, as somebody suggested yesterday, because ministers come and go, and, and, and basically they do not experience uh, in either way at the beginning or at the end, unless it is in the middle. Look, the, these are the things that, that I think we need to discuss uh, 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 today. What does it mean, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, pre how you see preparatory process? What does it mean, net mundial type uh, process, as Hartmut once mentioned and Avri, Avri said, we need to, to do that? So how you understand that? Because that is our, we need to develop our common understanding, how the, the, the meeting will be shaped. And after that, we will we'll go in the themes. And, and whether that is development or cybersecurity, this is up to us to uh, uh, sort of consult ourselves uh, based on our experience and knowledge what our constituencies would like to see, what our host country would like to see, taking into account the global agenda, sustainable development uh, as a main theme of 2015. All these elements we need sort of to square in, in uh, whatever structure we will uh, suggest. Uh, uh, Juan and Falso, uh, Alfonso, exclusively one minute to you. No, if you're asking about the, the, the time, I, I think that what Helmut said it was, is very wise, that, that distribution of having one long session is more efficient than the use of time. Uh, from my experience, when we have uh, events that have a lunch breaks in the middle, it, always the, the use of time, the efficiency in the use of time lowers. I think it's very wise their, their, their selection of having 
one uh, long session with a short break in the middle, I think that, that it could maximize the, the use of, of time. Of course, it can begin at uh, lunch could be at 11 to begin a little early, or as, as they said, to have a lunch from 12 to, to 1. But I, I really subscribe that from, from experience of many events, not only in Cuba, but outside of Cuba where have been, that a, a long session with a, with a break is a, is a better use. And about your question about if there should be high-level uh, sessions, I think that depends on the themes. Uh, I, for instance, this afternoon I'm going to, to propose two themes. Uh, main themes for, for the conference. If that should be accepted in a way, I then would uh, suggest that besides all the workshop being through uh, on those things, we should have two plenaries for, for those themes, a high level plenary for those themes that we, they can give more force to whatever outcome document that comes out. You know, outcome documents in the sense that it's given in the document in the report. It does not necessarily have to be a consensus document, but a document of the views uh, around the, the themes, you know, in, in a very inclusive uh, IGF way. Thank you. So thank you very much. We're continuing with the lengthy list of speakers, and, and again, I'm calling on you. Uh, please uh, try to be concise, as concise as you can. Uh, Mark, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'll endeavour to be uh, concise. Um, Mark Carvel, UK Government. I just wanted to pick up your question about uh, dynamic coalitions and their place in the structure of the IGF uh, in uh, Yuan Pasao uh, next year. Um, I, 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 my view is that their profile and visibility in the IGF and in the preparatory um, processes for the IGF is is very understated and, and not clearly defined. Um, as, as I understand it from the IGF website, uh, there are 12 active dynamic coalitions on a range of key issues, um, freedom of expression, um, uh, Internet of Things, network neutrality, access, child online safety. So these are all key issues. The dynamic coalitions, which are permanent manifestations of, of the IGF, um, have, I, I, I think, a much greater potential role in, in the IGF programming. If I take, for ex uh, as one example, um, the Dynamic Coalition on Internet Rights and Principles, um, I was reminded of their permanence when they applied to uh, be an observer at the Council of Europe um, at, uh, uh, on the Steering Committee on Media and um, uh, information society. This coalition has a steering committee, a mandate, um, a fixed reporting process, an action plan. So I really would suggest that uh, in our planning we think about uh, how we can incorporate the dynamic coalitions so that, uh, for example, we might invite them to brief the MAG on their action plans and their expected outputs for Johan Passau, uh, and then the MAG can take into account uh, those uh, submissions to us, and, and we can then position them more strategically in, in the IGF uh, structure. Um, I, I think this, this is an important aspect of the IGF. It intersects with intercessional activities as well, of course, because these are permanent coalitions. The, the, the rights dynamic coalition includes governments, including, uh, by the way, uh, the Brazilian uh, Ministry of Culture, but also French, Italian governments, the, the, the Swiss uh, Ofcom, as well as uh, private sector partners like Google and, uh, and uh, academics and uh, uh, ever, um, experts involved in, in rights and principles. So that's my suggestion, that uh, we invite the active dy dynamic coalitions to, to brief uh, the MAG and then we incorporate them and in, the, in, the, in the planning and we define a more precise place for them in the structure of the IGF uh, next year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. That's a good, good suggestion. Not only that one you mentioned, but all uh, dynamic coalitions. Uh, Angelique. Yes, Chair. I just want to be as concise as possible. And um, let me start with the time suggestion that was made. 
Um, I, I would feel comfortable if we would start, still start around 10.30, um, because we have sessions such as orientation sessions and that kind of things, capacity building, which I think are much more well done when you start them in the morning. Not too early, but 10.30 would, would be good, and mean sessions could start after lunch. It also makes sure that people don't come in there tired from the morning running around and having fun. Uh, we have to make sure people come in with enough energy to get through the day. So I, I would suggest 10.30. Um, when it comes to the high-level meeting, um, looking at how, how it went and thinking of what purpose it could have to better emphasize the, the outcome of our IGF, I think a high-level meeting at the end would probably be better um, because then um, people will take with them the outcomes of all the sessions we had and they, they, they can put it into the final document that they bring out to their governments and to whomever they represent, which gives us more exposure and takes things more down to earth. Um, then when it comes on the main sessions, Again, it is what, what, what is the purpose of the main sessions? Is it setting the scene for, for the workshops that follow that track? Or is it um, summarizing all that was in the work, what done in the workshops? Um, my my uh, personal preference is for, for setting the scene. But then again, the main session shouldn't be a lecture. Um, last, last, during the last IGF, there were some main sessions that really were people who had to sit down and listen and then get up and leave. It was done. Um, I, I prefer less, less um, experts, just people who are capable of engaging with, with, with the public and getting, because th there are questions with those who are sitting in, 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 uh, and listening, but they don't get an opportunity to speak. And also, if the people are too high level, sometimes they speak in a manner that, that alienates and distances them from the public and people are afraid to ask a question. So that, that is on, on the, the main sessions. When it comes to the workshops, um, it, we, we have to be very careful in, in, in saying to downsize that severely because you don't want to miss out opportunities for, for, for good workshops. But we have to be uh, very serious in looking at people are really keeping to, to, to the guidelines, as, as, as you pointed out, there are guidelines. And important is for first timers who want to suggest a workshop that they, that they are pointed and, 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 and uh, supported with, with assistance, especially in uh, getting speakers. For, because sometimes that is difficult if you're a first timer who suggests a workshop. And then last but not least, at, um, I want to ask special attention that, that we really do not forget capacity building as part of this IGF because in the last IGF it was just a round table and that's just not enough. Thank you. So thank you very much for your uh, comments. Uh, Anna? Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, um, Lots of things have, uh, have been already said, and I, I cannot say that I, I disagree. Uh, so I'm going to underline what I think that it's more important for me at this moment. Uh, so I, I totally concur with the, the need um, to uh, organize a, a meeting with the, the ambassadors of the missions here. Uh, to bring to their attention of what is going on uh, on the continuation of WISIS and that IGF 2015 is part of it. And because they can be multipliers uh, in their capitals and, um, and the, uh, back home and in the, in the capitals, uh, people in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they can be very important uh, for the multi-stakeholderism uh, because uh, it's difficult for some countries to still understand what internet governance is. Um, and so we have uh, some uh, stakeholders very engaged, but uh, it's still very difficult. And if uh, um, ambassadors, the Minister of Foreign Affairs can help, it will be very, very, uh, very interesting because it drives me to my other point that is the assistance that, that can be given to the speakers to each session. Of course, we, don't, we do not want lots of speakers in the, in the several workshops, but we must un understand that the majority of them, if they, they don't have a specific role there, they don't uh, have the necessary assistance to go there. And uh, so uh, we have to think about that uh, as well.
Uh, my other point is about the the structure. So I think that uh, we need a grand opening, but not a boring one. So I think that a new model uh, could be uh, we we could think about. Um, and we need very important people, and we need uh, uh, other people, and we need experts. We need everybody. Um, so I think that uh, to give the necessary dignity to uh, to this uh, to this event, I think that we really need uh, everybody, and we need a, a grand opening, we need a grand finale, and we need great workshops and uh, uh, good grand coalitions and. To, to, to pay attention what is really their, their role. Um, and uh, so, and uh, as, a, as a, uh, uh, and my final point is about the overlapping of the workshops and the main sessions. For two years that I'm asking not to do the, this, and I understand that there is a, a logistical problem, but I think that we have to overcome this lo logistical problem because the main sessions, they have to, to, to have a different purpose. And uh, for instance, the Net Mondial Initiative could be a very good theme for a main session. And uh, the implementation of the action plan that was adopted in, in Sao Paulo. Um, so my two cents for now. Thank you. So thank you very much. It's very easy to say we need a grand opening, grand finale, grand workshops. Let's, let's go for it. So. <laughs> uh, Still very long list of, of requests for the floor. Uh, Izumi is the next one. Thank you, Chair. Um, I see some general agreement uh, that next year should be much more participatory and productive. Um, and that it's perhaps in line with the CSTD's uh, suggestion for the improvement, which I was the member of the working group as well. As for the developing country participation, that way it's also mentioned there. Um, I think it's not only the numbers who come to the IGF that matters, <laughs> but also the quality of the participation. And that relates to the discussion about the uh, orientation session or newcomers thing. Um, I think it would be wise perhaps to have some kind of help desk um, throughout the meetings, not only the first day session of orientation, Many people I have experienced last year I interviewed have still some problems or questions at the last day, and they don't know whom to ask. <coughs> For that, perhaps, um, since I'm outgoing, the, I'd like to beg your pardon that if the, the existing Mac members will bear some badge, I'm a Mac, so that, visible, so that anyone can hold you, ask questions, or complain, or convey the expectation and the likes. That's, that would be much more sort of uh, interactive, participatory on both sides so that MAG members could feel how these people were. Because quite often, m many MAG members are busy organizing the sessions or their you know, speeches and stuff and do not have much time to interact with unknown people that come, who came the first time. So that would be my sort of suggestion. About the time, I'm fine with starting at noon, if that's a kind of culture there. Uh, I'd like to know. If, if, and also, you know, maybe we can perhaps better use some of the time for experimentation. Of course, I see some hesitance to go into that, but um, um, I'd like to go for it. Um, also, the, some kind of net mundial type of the uh, workings or the having more tangible outcomes, of course, I'm always support that. Um, finally, I'd like to insist on changing the norms and terms of the remote participation, as I mentioned yesterday. E even the ginger sometimes say remote participation instead of online participation. I really like to have the equal sense, not only how to call, but in a substantive manner. That means that if we can prepare some guideline for the session organizers and chairs that treat as much as possible of the online participants equal to the on-site participants in their own organizing the meetings. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Um, uh, Virok, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thought I'll just spend, uh, divide my presentation two parts quickly. One, I think there are 25 new members. It'll just help to get the basic structure out so that we could then discuss that. Essentially, we have a four-day event which is divided into two halves each day that gives us three hours before lunch, three hours after lunch, that allows for 20 90-minute sessions in each of the pre-lunch, post-lunch sessions, or 30 60-minute workshops. And that's how the building blocks are built around this um, IGF for the four days. It usually takes away the opening and the closing ceremony, and what you're left with it is six three-hour blocks. Basically, that's what the architecture of IGF is in terms of time available to us. Um, I just wanted to say that to the comment that has been made about improving workshops, it's important that we point out and note what was done last year so that everybody's on the same page, including a comment that was mentioned about bringing greater transparency in workshops. So here is what happened last year for the benefit of everyone very quickly, and then my suggestions on improvements uh, for the current structure. Um, Sub-themes were decided through public consultation in an open room where everybody was able to participate, provide inputs. Criteria for selecting workshops was put out publicly. Uh, criteria was decided publicly. Um, uh, they were all placed in the public domains. There were higher scores and first-time scores for developing countries uh, proposals, for first-time proposals, for new formats, as being talked about by every. There was actually an encouragement to provide new formats so that higher marks could be awarded to people who came in with exciting new formats or different formats. Um, we uh, re removed, I think the last of the MAG got together and removed any marks that were awarded to well-written proposals because that brought down to uh, good English and that's not something that you know we should qualify proposals on. We also requested and I think enforced that no MAG member would uh, uh, submit their own workshops which had been happening till, till last year. Um, and all of this was in the public domain. There were also marks for linking it to the sub-themes that were agreed publicly and put in the public domain. Um, then uh, everybody was supposed to send out their proposals. The proposals were put online, so all the 208 proposals were available online for everybody to see. Then each MAG member had to rate it individually, so there is no chance of three or four getting together or scoring highly on any proposal because there were 55 members, so unless you had at least 40 voting for one, you couldn't get the proposal in. So that's to, in terms of balance and transparency. Uh, members, MAG members recused from voting, I did, and many others did, from, vote, from writing scores for any proposals that you knew people or that came from your organizations or if you were invited to speak on that. Um, and then the selection of the workshops took, I think, almost a day in Paris where every single workshop was discussed, lower ranked workshops were bought up, merged, all of that stuff happened completely in the public domain, <laughs> after which a final list, and I think we selected 90 out of a total of 200 submissions. So that's to transparency, and I just wanted to make sure we make those points now. On top of this, if there is greater transparency possible, we should certainly entertain those specific comments and recommendations, because that will be very helpful. But this was already done, um, and, and was done quite diligently. Um, my um, uh, recommendations for the structure for next year, sir, are the following. Uh, a pre-event, um, which is to be the erstwhile day zero uh, till yesterday, um, should have a serious two-hour, three-hour session on setting the scene for all the newcomers and the first-timers so that they are able to discuss after a half an hour presentation by those who are arranging the IGF, uh, MAG, MAG members and, and organizers of the main sessions, they're able to ask questions for almost two hours. We tried this, but there was very little time left for interaction, so we should have setting the scene on day zero if possible, and everybody should be encouraged to go to that so that there is no, um, there is no, uh, there are no questions left when the actual event begins. That doesn't take away the need for a help test that has been just spoken about. Um, my second request for consideration is that we should combine either the opening or the closing with the high level. I think there's this high level, then there's this opening, and then there's the closing, which sort of there is too much indulgence of this. So we should bring it down from three big events to two, 
And if we have high level with the opening, then make it three hours, otherwise two hours. If you want to take it to the closing, then make that three hours. So which one of them, you know, make one three hours and one, one hour 20 minutes so that we are able to give more time back to, in any event, at the closing ceremony, you know, 60% people have left because there are day flights and stuff like that. So we should be careful about not piling up too much there. That's my practical experience from the last six IGFs. Um, uh, just keep in mind in case, I, I would recommend that we could have two plenaries or main sessions at the end of day two and three because one and two already have a closing and an opening and a high level. They could be moved toward the end of the day. But please remember that if you decide to have a main session as a plenary, which means nothing else goes on, then you do lose the space for 40, 90 minute sessions or 60, 30 minute sessions. So everything will come at a cost and the community there, remember we already had 208 proposals and we rejected uh, nearly 60% of those. That's not something that's a good sign because there are more people wanting to bring in their proposals and this is in spite of scoring high for newcomers and first timers. Uh, my fourth proposal, sir, would be to have uh, MAG members assist with the plenary apart from the organizing, the, the, actually the, the, the administrative work. They should be available to assist with those who are arranging proposals, uh, sorry, workshops and events so that that can be all put into place uh, rather than them having to run back and forth with organizers or, or people who are you know, doing the screen stuff. And last would be the support for uh, the help desk. I think the point about the help desk is well taken. That should be manned, uh, hopefully, by MAG members who are wearing some sort of a badge. It also says, you know, doesn't say, don't ask me, I'm already lost. Um, but I think we should, have, uh, we should have MAG members assist through that process. Um, there's uh, one last point that I wanted to make, but I think, uh, yes. Uh, to Avery's point about getting um, more people involved more discussion, there were high scores for new formats. Unfortunately, 90% of the workshops, which by the way come from the community, we have no role in deciding that format, we have a role in scoring them, came with panels. Even though we gave them an incentive, 90% of the 208 proposals came with panels as the structure. So then there's very little that the MAC can do. However, I will close with this, we already have uh, the following formats available. You can do roundtables, you can do panels, we have open forums, main session, dynamic coalitions, flash sessions, and unconferencing. So we actually do offer a menu of products that are available for people to choose from. Regrettably, they continue to choose panels as their favorite choice. And that's why it looks like people talking to others. Thank you. So then maybe we need to take panels off the menu that we're proposing yeah. to the workshop or that's, or that's to one the organizer. Way. <laughs> so I will take uh, to, uh, until lunch two more speakers, uh, Maria Victoria and then Robert afterwards. Maria Victoria. Gracias, Chair. Thank you very, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. <laughs> I'll be speaking in Spanish or trying to. First of all, I'd like to refer to what a few speakers have already mentioned concerning the participation of developing countries, and in particular governments. One of the main aspects here is uh, the understanding, uh, in other words, let's say quality over quantity. We agree that uh, we have sessions for information, both in Geneva and New York. These have already been mentioned uh, as a possibility. It's also important that we have all of the online resources we need and available. It's important that participants have this kind of knowledge ahead of time so that they can keep themselves abreast of the structuring of the forum. Uh, I also agree with the different formats being used that uh, were just mentioned. And let me just say one thing about the high-level segment. It is indeed very important in terms of giving greater visibility and political weight to the forum. Nevertheless, I think 
this is also an issue that should be discussed with the host government uh, so that and we might even need straitjackets for this kind of event. In any case, this should be done uh, at the beginning of the session. If it's done at the end, well, we might find ourselves where the ministers are speaking to an empty house. So, and it's also very complicated for ministers or government senior officials uh, talking about a document that hasn't been negotiated previously. I think all of us in this room are aware of this. It would be much easier than to have this at the beginning, uh, political representatives that want to attend. And uh, let's also l not forget the follow-up efforts that have to be made by the government, the host government, uh, that should report on progress made in terms of uh, uh, milestones that may have been achieved and other things. Thank you. So thank you very much for your comments, and I'm uh, inviting Robert to take the floor as the last speaker in the morning session. Robert, please. Thank you. Uh, dear Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues, I suggest to start with the work of the plenary session, uh, the opening ceremony to ascend into the middle of the first day because it uh, will give more mobility for the participants in uh, terms of flights and uh, roads within Brazil. Uh, in continue of yesterday's discussion, I think that we uh, can, if it's possible, of course, uh, to take uh, certain decisions uh, on the forum, for example, the paragraph, paragraphs of the outcome document using, using electronic voting. Instead of uh, guessing on the coffee seek, have we consensus or not? Uh, this can be done using application for mobile devices, uh, for example. Uh, I suggest we think of uh, uh, clear uh, structure of the forum. For example, different stakeholders may have their own agenda. This does not mean that uh, there will be some uh, separation or someone will not be able to go some here, somewhere, but uh, it will help to more uh, accurately uh, orient the participants of the forum and uh, for more uh, effective uh, solution. Also, we have the absence of uh, linguistic diversity on workshops and uh, the lack of interactivity. On my opini opinion, we need uh, clear rules uh, for remote participants. Uh, given the remoteness of the venue, we must provide more opportunities for remote participa participation. Uh, and uh, most importantly, we need to understand uh, what goals we need to achieve. Uh, for what uh, purpose are we going to do something? Uh, the beach, sun, cocktails and the sunset, this is very well, but we should go there uh, not only to just have a pleasant conversation. Perhaps we could uh, schedule a, a special plenary session for decision-making, voting on, on various issues, kind of the... Uh, uh, the point of decisions, and uh, this may be the run-up to the grand fi final. Or we can do it uh, in the end of every session, uh, main session. Thank you. So thank you very much, Robert. I, I suspect that uh, the sunset will be absent from the scene. We'll be on the east coast, and we will not see a, a sunset over the water. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, I, I would like to also thank interpreters for staying five minutes longer than, than uh, uh, you should. Uh, thank you for those who have uh, uh, spoken uh, on the topic. We have uh, still another ten uh, requests for the floor. The first, uh, the first uh, in the afternoon session will be representative of the European Commission. We will start at uh, 3 o'clock sharp. Please be back in the room. Uh, you, you now uh, guess my style. I'm starting on time, and I'm trying to finish on time. So thank you very much. Bon appétit, and we're uh, gathering here at 3 o'clock. <laughs>